Hey, yo, what's happening, everybody? Welcome into possibly the earliest recording of No Cool Down Podcast ever on record, at least as of this recording, because damn, uh, alarms were set, mistakes were made, life happens, but damn it, we still here. I'm with my podcast partner in crime, uh, Went Easy. What's going on, fam? Hey, man, how you doing? Uh, it's very early in the morning. Uh, definitely got finessed into waking up early, prior for the best in in the grand scheme of things but i don't like it yeah probably probably is i i'm not i'm gonna be very honest i usually am an early morning person but this was this was not the play i i recorded another podcast uh last night and i was like yeah i can swing it i could do it and when my dumb ass seen the alarm i jumped up like the spiders had hit me uh or at least when i seen the time though and yeah did not end up well, but we're here nonetheless, damn it. We are here nonetheless to talk about all the news from last week. There's a lot of it uh, to cover ground. Uh, make sure you're checking us out on all audio podcast platforms. Again, everywhere. Uh, no cooldown podcast. Just type it in. We'll be right there. Rate us five stars. Again, like, share, comment, subscribe if you're watching the video version on YouTube. Check out all of our social platforms for all the little news, tidbits, memes that we get up to. Uh, and, and just show the show some love so we can get further into the algorithm, further into the gaming space where more listeners can potentially check in. Now, we have got a bunch of news to get through. Uh, listen, without further ado, you want to go into it? Let's get into it. All right, let's start with the meat and potatoes, man. We got to get right to the shits. Hell Divers 2, possibly sweeping the nation as one of the uh, you know most scintillating games uh, you know that that have that have popped out lately. It's been taking the world by storm. It's been breaking Steam records. It's been all over the place. Again, people are literally lining up in droves to try and get on the game. The servers might not help it, but. It, the demand is there. Helldivers 2 is has been nothing short of a success for again PlayStation, who who uh, again help help push that thing on the publishing side. Uh, for Arrowhead, uh, they've been putting in a lot of work. There's been so much to this game, but for right now, I just want to talk about your impressions of the game, your expectations going in, and how do you feel about you know how it plays, how it feels, and its reception in the community. So, what I would like to to for, first point out is. When we first saw Helldivers, I remember it being very much, to me, at least I want to say in this podcast, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it was a very mm-hmm. lukewarm reception. We saw it and we were like, oh, that's a cool game place it's just coming out with. I'm probably not going to buy it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it looked cool. It was a really cool concept. I'm definitely interested in seeing what it's like, but I'm not really, I'm not waiting for it. I didn't even know what date it came out on. Um, but the more the trailers came out, I'm like, oh, it looks like a bunch of silly fun. When I found out it was on PC, that kind of changed the game for me and that it was cross-platform. I was like, oh, no, this might, this might be cool. Like it, it definitely cross-platform multiplayer games is like, to me, the standard, anything below that is like substandard. So like, I wouldn't have bought it if it was just like, oh, all PC players. Actually, that's a lie. I would have bought it, but we'll get into why in a second. But if it's a PC multiplayer, if it's a multiplayer game that isn't cross-plat, but has games on multiple platforms i'm very kind of like weary of it when i played this game i was not expecting it to be this much fun it is quite literally one of the best multiplayer experiences that i have experienced in a long time um the combat is not fluid the running is not fluid Uh, a lot of it is very very clunky and that's what makes it really, really good. Running into a giant nest of bugs and not being able to like wall slide or just like like literally being like, oh man, there's some mud here. I'm gonna be slowed down. And then you see like a giant big ass like cockroach on your ass. It's <laughs> horrifying, but it's the funniest thing in the world. And even small things like, oh, when you reload you don't have a number of bullets you literally will throw away the rest of the mag Mm -hmm. if you're somebody who uses like one or two shots and then reloads like you're throwing away a bunch of bullets so it makes certain interactions because it makes you it makes you not want to reload Mm -hmm. but when you go up against a horde when you when you're walking around with half a mag because you don't want to waste those bullets and throw them away and all of a sudden you see a bunch of spiders you're like damn what am I gonna do? Because I don't have enough bullets to kill all these dudes, but I so I'm gonna have to like let the clip off, reload. But if your gun takes forever to reload, you're in a bad situation. Mm-hmm. Like there's just so many different aspects of the game that are so funny. Um, it definitely is 
not forgiving but also forgiving at the same time it gives you a sense of difficulty because like for me when i play i try to keep my character out i mean i feel like everybody does try to keep their characters alive, as alive as possible without having to do any reinforcement but anything can really kill you your own stuff can kill you people respawning can kill you everything in the world can kill you but it's not super punishing because you could easily just come right back even when you're playing by yourself like you still can read can just drop back in which is really really fun because it makes dying not as impactful as something like damn i died in like elden ring for example is the best like the, the 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 furthest example that i can think of it's like mm -hmm. when you die in elden ring you got to walk all the way back go through all that stuff get your souls back all that yada 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 it's very punishing when you die in this game it sucks and it really starts wearing on you when you guys start starting to run down on, on reinforcement but it's never like when i die to a turret that my friend plays it's more funny than it is frustrating mm. it's more it's funnier when i see somebody try to cook a grenade and it cooks in their hand i'm like yo bro what happened like that's it's funny <laughs> um and the difficulty is up there like this game can get really really hard and what makes the game really interesting is it's never about like what's the best build period it's what's the best build for the job mm -hmm. and it's something that makes everything you buy or every like gun you get really really important because a gun that has like an smg is great for fighting uh the bugs or like a shotgun is great for fighting the bugs but then if you have the automatons who have more armor maybe the shotgun isn't the best i i will say though the shotgun is probably the best for yes. all things in this game that shit slaps but there are certain uh weapons like uh, the 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 marksman rifle that's really good for fighting the automatons because you need to get headshots with those guys whereas the bugs you really don't even really need to get headshots you need to just shoot them in the big ass weak spots that are usually behind their armor or on the opposite side so maybe something that lets you move around quicker like an smg or like a shotgun that you can use at a closer range would be better mm -hmm. and it's the entire game is is kind of like a perfect balance of a lot of different things um even like the calling in your stratagems is sometimes yeah. it's sometimes it's helpful sometimes you'll completely the, the the barrage cannon that you spent that they must have spent bajillions of dollars constructing <laughs> can't hit a fucking shot and now they all know where you are because you just exploded an entire area so they start moving towards you yeah it's such a it's such a chaotic fun experience truly was not expecting this to be such an amazing game mm -hmm. like this seemed like an underdog in like playstation at the time because we were coming off of what power world was, was yeah. the last big ass fucking boom in gaming we're coming off of power world and i'm like not expecting anything to dethrone it i haven't touched power world since this game came out and it's that's that's wild because i couldn't get off of power world mm -hmm. i was drinking water oh my gosh I didn't get <laughs> no, to me. It's, it's early guys it's early please allow me so uh with me and my experience, I, I'll show you what it is. Uh, at some point, if you guys can just close your eyes and imagine, you know, you get ready for the game, you gear up, uh, you click on Hell Divers, man, you loading in, and uh, you know what I'm saying, saying uh, error server update, you know what I'm saying, or, 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 or timed out, request to, request to join service timed out, and you're stuck on a loading screen for like four, five, six hours trying to get in. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate, I'm not gonna hate. That's just my personal experience. I haven't gotten enough time. I'm, literally, as we're recording this, I'm staring at the the main ship, the main lobby ship, or whatever, because um I, I was again I was loading up. I was trying to get in, and you'll see probably the footage for the episode today if you're watching the video version. Um, and I was in the tutorial, but I was in the tutorial for so long that I think the the game just apparently just like you know what you made it through basic training. Go ahead. They just skipped me through the entire sequence. I did not have to go through the tutorial, so I don't know if that was by design, but that's hilarious. That right there is hilarious, and I feel like that is a part of the essence of this game that I've seen again from my experience seeing. I, I I have to you know kind of double back and get my full impressions of me playing the game actually, but just again this is under the under the guys and from the perspective of somebody who's been intently watching the game you know through when through everybody who's been playing watching the meme seeing all the discourse on twitter and just you know paying attention to you know what what the the general thoughts are and just you know the zeitgeist of this whole thing a big part of this is just fun it's just having fun it's just making the game as fun as possible through you know 
the, the, the writing, you know, maybe sometimes the quippy, the cheesy, or just like, you know, those those bold ass statements that, that you might hear over the over the PA or from a, you know a higher commanding officer or from the play, the the soldier you're playing as yelling random things in the in the name of democracy. Like that fun factor is there in the in the in the writing, in the physical play, in the actual physical aspect of this game. Like when you're shooting, you know what I'm saying? When you're shooting like an automaton or something like that, from what I've seen, like, you know, parts fly off, things go everywhere. It's not the same, it's not necessarily the same like impact every time when you know when all your guns shoot can shoot different ways. You know, it's just that variety in terms of the physical aspect of it. When you again, the biggest thing I've probably been seeing when people throw stuff and they're like they did the ragdoll physics. They fly everywhere and stuff like that. Like, you, you miscue a grenade, and you start flying everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, you send somebody flying. A cannon might hit you and send you to, like, the next side of the planet. Like, that level of interactive interactive nature and that level of spontaneity. That's the word. The spontaneity with the gameplay is... That's really impressive. To me, that's very, very impressive because it creates a pathway for so many moments. We've already seen it literally over the past... What, it's, it's only been, what, a week? Not even a week? Yeah. Like, it, there's been so many clips of so many different interactions and in how people have approached the game. It's insane. And that's, that for me, that that's the makings, or that's a telltale sign of a great game. If you can approach this game in 800 different ways, the amount of moments that can be shared and added to the collective consciousness of, of the game itself. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, if, if, if there's, like, you know, there's one mission, but there's a million ways to do it that's going to be so much fun because you know you're going to go in with a different experience as somebody else and and and, you know again those experiences can be viewed shared uh and just appreciated in all of its different forms and like i feel like from what i've seen the game encourages you to kind of play play the way you want to play the one thing that i that i will be uh critical of in my time i don't like the strategy guide era you know what I'm saying? I don't like the, I guess, the online strategy guide era. Again, it started from way back for single-player games and stuff like that. You know, they provided the ways to. And I'm not mad at that to a certain extent of, like, learning, like, little secrets and stuff about the world and all that. But especially in an online context nowadays, like, strategy guides or metas, as people are calling them and stuff like that. Oh, what's the best build? What's the what's the best loadout for, uh, you know, hell divers or, you know, the Call of Duties and all that stuff like that? Or, or uh, you know, let's call it whatever mode. Whatever mode you can think of, there's probably going to be somebody dropping a guide on it for no reason. And I get it. People want to know. There's that genuine curiosity and the human drive to know something and know the best way to do something. Know a best practice so they can have an easier time. I understand that. But when everybody kind of follows suit to that it kind of takes away the joy of variety and approaching something a different way and that's what i've seen virtually nothing of in this gameplay experience again co-op games can fall victim to it too look at borderlands everybody always has like a best build or a b shield and shit like shit like that from his time but looking at looking at the game now there's not really any if, when correct me if i'm wrong i'm not sure if there's any damage registry or damage like recognition things exi- except like the parts are just flying off of a, off an enemy or something like that right like you can shoot no. there's not really numbers i don't know if there's like you know like actual there are no numbers you know what i mean there is um if you hit something there's a hit marker and sometimes the red hit marker will sh- i think i don't even know if red hit marker means you killed shit because i shoot mm-hmm. things it'll come up red they'll still move so it's a crit- so, so it's a critical hit and that's fine i have that, no idea it, if yeah. that's what that is either <laughs> i cannot confirm nor deny these things i shoot things till they stop moving i hey. don't i don't follow these hit markers my hit markers just tell me i i hit the shot that's hey. all that it is for me hey i respect it bro i respect it. you trying to cover your ground man till they till they like, all in the dirt to the term it is bro, in the dirt. i will i'll put 17 i'll put every single bullet in the clip if i see things moving i don't care if it's a glitch or not i'm not i'm not dealing with these chargers i respect that i respect that highly but but again it's that's as far as it goes it's just a hit marker recognition from what i've been seeing it's not like oh it's a number thing it's not a damage output thing uh 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 you know i'm saying a reload thing there's not no there's not that that hard set stat thing that you have to look at the the true differentiation and deviation where people take in their approaching gameplay is just what guns they're going to run what equipment they're going to have and how does that again like one said support the team support the mission dynamic and that's where that's where fun is that's where the fun is actually breaking down oh you know some people do all this but i like having a shotgun so i'm gonna have a shotgun you know what i'm saying and you're not necessarily being penalized in the meta of the game for having a shotgun except if the mission doesn't call for it you know what i mean It, it it's conducive to the design and the great design of how the game is laid out and 
it's wonderful man it's wonderful from from what i've seen from again all this gameplay stuff it looks like nothing but fun and yeah. everybody's been having a blast and i i will say outside of the game which i can i can definitely speak on this side of it the the marketing and the community aspect that has grown from hell Divers spawned so quickly but this is one of those games that you can immediately tell it will be here for a long time based on that level of response and that level of commitment to again the 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 world what people have been kind of getting into this is something that has potential to be a very long lasting community that builds out like you saw quickly tiktok and and, and twitter and everybody's been taken to it like so 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 fast bro like, like you see you see what happened in online yeah no absolutely it's it's taken and it's so funny and you know a game is growing at its own pace like you know this game it's not you can't really say that it's the marketing you can't really say that it's like the hype or the content creators they 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 got for it. No. i don't know if they've done any any campaigns or anything this like was that. this was straight this was straight word of mouth they had the one commercial yeah. last year they were at the usual showcases but yeah this this is word of mouth boom this is a word of mouth boom in its purest form it has to be yeah because it's it's really interesting to show because you we didn't have server problems when the game released. There nope. were no server problems. I got in, no problem, easy. Every time for the whole that for whole whole first weekend I got in. Um, it wasn't until now, like right now, even and I was telling uh shout out to the homie Kendall. I was telling the, the homie Kendall, I'm like, yo, the other day, I'm like, man, it's not that big a deal. People are over over exaggerating. It's not as bad as it is. Uh, I tried to get in for like an hour yesterday and I could not get in. You know, and I, I was like, maybe I'm wrong because yeah, you are definitely ridiculous. you are definitely wrong. Again, you know when I started um, loading in to try and play uh, Hell Divers, I finished editing another video at like 3:30, 3:34, and I turned it on at like three. I want to say 3:45 just to have it in the background while I wrapped it up. Um, I was uh, I was waiting until nine o'clock to get in, and that's when my mm-hmm. other podcast started recording just about. And I was like, you know what? It's not happening. I'm turning it off. Yeah. It was literally yeah. five, five and change hours and nothing moved. I was like, bro, that's it's tough. But also I'm like, bro, good on them. I'm glad that they're getting that level of success and notoriety. Cause again, it picked up like like that. And not only have been people just enjoying the the gameplay and picking their own spots and and you know, giving their own the memes and spins on things, it's turned into actual consistent lore. When when and for me, again, I, I, a part a part of college went towards this education and just me paying attention to like advertising and marketing trends and shit like that. But when you see uh, somebody, you know, like something happen or a brand puts something out like a game or whatever, an experience it comes out and people literally mesh to the actual like marketing or, or like the core messaging of some of the like the world and, and all that stuff. If they bring that to the real world in unison, that's when you know you got something crazy. You know what I mean? Everybody's talking about, yo, they want to spread democracy. I ain't seen niggas this patriotic about anything ever, ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it, it's it's wild how much people have taken to the world of this game. That, again, going going in so far as, like, theory crafting about the game, saying that, oh, Helldivers are the bad guys because we need resources. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm, yeah. how far that they've taken the 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 mythos of the game in just a week is insane and again it's broken numerous records it's one of the highest you know it's, it's the highest playstation playstation release on another platform ever uh like 400 something thousand concurrent players at, at, at its peak at one point it might go higher if they fix them damn servers um it's it's it looks insane bro it looks insane and it, yeah g- good on them because you know what no cooldown called this i'm not gonna lie we called this shit I, I, I say what y'all want. Say what y'all want. You can go back and, and do the knowledge. Do the knowledge. I'm going to stand on business. I, I said, you said, and I'm pretty sure we agreed that it, this was going to be a good game. Just because of the leap that they were making and the quality that they were putting into the game. Every time we saw it, it looked better and better. And I was like, yo, yeah. I didn't. nobody expected the, the boom like this, of course. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it's yeah. going to go crazy. But I knew this was going to be a good game just because, again, how good Helldivers was as an original concept. And for me... Those level of studios, like Double A and, and thereabouts, when they take their game into a completely different plane of development, they went from again pure top down, and this is like third person. You know what I mean? Like like the small soldier, the uh, top down. Like it felt like Black Ops. Um, what's it called? The that one top down zombies movie. I can't remember. Um, like the COD Arcade or something like that. I can't remember. But they took it from that t- kind of style or their general area, and they brought it to this third person and they it worked like a charm bro it worked like a charm so i'm i'm over the moon for them uh and yeah that just that, that just looks good i'm i'm so happy for them 
No, facts. Same here. I I genuinely think that games like this, games like Power World, just like, hey, we're going to take a wild ass idea and we're going to run with it. We're not going to make your standard looter shooter. We're not going to make your standard. Um, Oh, I don't even like we're not gonna make yeah. your standard MOBAs like we're trying to create something new and organic and different and it shows that we like the gamers everybody wants it everybody wants something new everybody wants something fun like people have petitions to bring Power World to PlayStation people have petitions to bring Helldivers to Xbox like yeah. there's they a were, lot of games they was making whole memes about the Halo player stepping in and supporting the shock troopers and stuff I was like what yeah <laughs> like it's wild but, but that's like what we want man we don't really care about like the next fortnite we want we we don't want the next fortnite because we love fortnite's gameplay and we want to keep seeing games like fortnite we want the next fortnite in the sense of like we want something new we want something that would that change the game we, we, and we hell divers games game. like hell divers and and power world those things change the game every Facts. time they release again expanding the definition of what a great experience feels like in the modern day that's what that's what we want at the end of the day we don't want we don't want the same you know what i'm saying thing or somebody trying to chase the same thing that somebody already made we want a significant deviation from what the norm is and that's what we're finding and uh again to speak on more things that you know i know since these damn servers wouldn't let me in uh we can get to the server thing in a second but i also want to talk about kind of the 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 conversation and the rhetoric behind the game from the from the developers from their ceo and again they've chosen to kind of like take this mentality on their monetization strategy where it's like you know it's very it's very laissez-faire he, he basically there was like yeah listen you're not we're not going to incentivize buying stuff like that you can if you want to, to buy certain things in the game but it's not going to have a significant too much of a significant impact you know what i'm saying like on, on the game exactly you can have some weapons that are you know there or about as strong as the ones you you can unlock and earn that you know there's a little bit of differences there but there isn't a force there isn't like a push to like really really like you know again force the hand of people to try and buy into this game and i feel like the philosophy on monetization the philosophy on their development roadmap and and their approach to the game has really garnered them some extra you know some extra credits in the bank from a lot of people you know especially from the words i think it's pill pillstat please uh, plistat or please uh, forgive me if i butcher the name i i forgot uh i'm gonna go find uh, again the ceo's name just to correct it in a second but how do you feel about kind of just their mentality on the monetization strategy and just their their roadmap their their transparency with the you know the people who've been interacting with the game so far so one thing that I big 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 ups to them um is they are very much trying to like capture that that essence of playing games on the couch and that's actually that's really what held is one kind of felt like but i think their the monetization is really interesting because i remember when i bought the game i didn't buy the deluxe edition i just bought the regular one and i was like damn i kind of want to get this extra battle pass so i spent an extra 10 bucks uh to get the the x because it's like a little battle pass after the one that they give you in the game and then i realized if i would have just completed the one that i had in game i wouldn't even have had to buy it because it would have given me enough credits to buy the one the premium one and i would have just kept grinding really um their their way of like monetizing the game is is kind of just like hey there's all this stuff there's a, a rotating store if you you want to spend your super credits on it you can um the stuff isn't really super expensive their armor and the thing is that these armor sets really are just cosmetically different so they have stats but the stats aren't like they will literally you will get armor in the game from the regular battle pass that has the same exact stats they just look different it's really just about looks um, and I think that that's fine, uh, honestly. Like, if you just want to be dripped out, it is what it is. Also, you get money out of the battle pass, similar to like a Fortnite, where like every tier you get at least like a dollar back, so that you could by the end of it probably buy another one. Will that continue? I have no idea. It is a thirty dollar game. The fact that they gave me the first battle pass for free, shit. If they gave me a second one for free, like I'd be cool with it. Like that. That would to me that would be enough. That would be enough to to not to to then put in another an extra 10 after that that second battle pass but the monetization is really really well done and you can tell that they're kind of like really trying to stick true to their to who they are um by when people were asking for a pvp mode in hell divers they were asking like yo when can we get a, a hell divers pvp mode and they were like yo there's a bunch of pvp games you could play uh this isn't really a pvp game it has elements of pvp because you can shoot your teammates but 
at what point would two hell divers fight each other you know that's not the purpose of the game you wouldn't it wouldn't make sense for two for you to fight your own army so i'm really happy that they're like really set in their ways when it comes to things like this like it is very much hey we're just trying to create uh this game and be ourselves we're not trying to become the next big shooter you know mm -hmm. yeah uh this is it's, it's just and, and his name is Pilestet. Thank you. Uh, uh, give me some time to find his name. It's Pilestet. He's the CEO at uh, at uh, what's it called Arrowhead, uh, Arrow Hell Divers Two Creative Director. And again, it's just it's just that it's it's just it's just a freshness of again transparency that feels authentic. You know what I mean? It's not like it, it doesn't feel like a smoke and mirror. He's being dead ass serious when he's talking. He's like, Yo, listen, all right, this might not be the game for you if you're thinking of PvP. You know, our experience is plenty of bugs. It's plenty of again automatons to shoot and there's there's a lot of there's a lot of things here if you look for it but if it's not the experience for you it's not the experience for you as much as he wants to sell the game he's like bro i get it you know it might it might not be your it might not be your, your jam it might not be your jam so you know it's just it's nice to see that 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 it, it's just that level of that level of openness bro and i feel like that that mentality garners them a lot of grace and a lot of credit in the bank because again they don't get this from everybody in the gaming space they don't really do that this man even went so far as to saying you know he's like listen if you have no cash you know what i'm saying if you don't have any money get the game later get the game later the game's not going anywhere we're working on server things he would hate he said he would hate your first experience to be the server issues that they're going through right now while they're fixing it i know he understands the patience but he's like yo like just uh, i want i we of course we want your money of course we do we want to say you know do we want the game to do well but we would rather you have a great first experience with the game and not get stuck in server queues than spend your money now and then you know what i'm saying just try and rush to get in there like if that doesn't show at least some of the the mentality as a studio as a, as leadership at that studio i don't know what will so that that's a very sign that's a very good sign of of goodwill towards the fans towards the gamers towards the players who are interested in this game and man it, it just brings the server issues which we can talk about now again a little bit more in perspective and just a little bit more grace now again with that they just a little tidbit on it again they, they they've been peaking and they've been capping at i think 450,000 players 450,000 was their server capacity uh, that they've set right now but then there's they're, they're uh, actually uh, on the way they're starting to roll out changes today to the servers start increasing capacity do some hot fixes and uh, hopefully up the the level of of, of uh, player limits and and diver limits there to spread spread democracy to the the grand land so i guess which is with this whole situation about uh about the you know server capacity issues how do you feel about how they're addressing it uh i mean like you can't really the thing about server issues is that like you could you you're gonna fall into two traps right it's it's a it's a trap it's damned if you do damned if you don't the problem with uh the way it works now is like you could spend all this extra money on a game like hell divers to get all their servers up and then nobody show up like this game could have easily just flew under the radar and when i say easily i don't mean because the game is bad but like i could have seen a lot of people just checked out of it They're like ah, i don't really mm -hmm. care about this um it's a franchise they don't know like it's it, it's a bit of a risk it was a risk so they're like yo we're gonna keep it to a sizable thing and like i said in the, when i first bought the game for that whole weekend mm -hmm. no issues getting in zero issues getting in um so when i when i see that they're having server issues now it's only natural um i would love for there to be a future where getting servers online faster would be great but i can't really expect them to to do such things when like i would hate to work on a weekend when i was having most of my issues it was on the weekend so it's like damn you start up on a monday like which was yesterday you gotta get the servers ready you gotta put all the shit in it like i don't know how all, none of that shit works so i'm assuming it's gonna take some time it's awful it is a really really bad time for people uh who are really trying to get into this game um and it sucks because a lot of people are probably gonna like i saw people i made a tiktok that's kind of been moving around a lot and i've been seeing a lot of different comments some people are like wow you guys are able to get in when you guys are able to get quick play what what's going on here yada 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 and it's like really interesting to see all these different like um perspectives of things because it sucks that you can't get in but when you do get in it's amazing matchmaking mm -hmm. does suck but when you play with friends it is a fucking black even just one other person turns any mission you're playing into a, a funny time i was playing uh a mission with with chaos and we were getting clapped but mm -hmm. it was funny like i never failing missions usually it's like damn bro like we really 
Uh, we yeah. failed. They were like, yo, I got out with three samples. That's better than nothing. Let's let's jump back in there. Let's try it again. Maybe it's the stratagems that we were using. Maybe it's the stuff that we were using. Um, and that's what's tough, man. It's like, I can't, I want to fault them for the servers. And I will, like, I, I think it's a very valid criticism. Like, you guys weren't ready on launch. But I, at this point, I can't say that and really mean it too much because, like, we say that about every game that isn't ready on launch. A lot of games aren't ready on launch. Facts. And, and they, we still play those. Yeah. And they be and they be AAA certified or something like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Some some folks spend ninety dollars on them type games and now, they don't I, even I was literally was about to say that. Like some people <laughs> like I spent more money on games that work less. And not even from a and it's not, and it's just matchmaking. That's the that, that's the, the thing that I really want to emphasize. It's not that the game runs bad. Sometimes it does crash, but I j I don't even know if it's crashing because the game's running bad or if it's crashing because of the servers. But I the game for me does not run bad. The game plays well. Everything is smooth. Some games I can't even tab out of without it like collapsing on itself. Mm -hmm. This game runs really well. And then, but when the servers aren't up, you know, it is what it is. And another thing that sucks too is like always online gaming. Uh, you can't get into this game and do a solo mission by yourself for example i mean it's yeah. not really designed this game isn't really designed to, for you to be playing it solo if you're playing it solo you're goaded you're doing really great yeah. i played like a couple missions by myself but it has to be like on a lower difficulty um and there's no ai bots maybe that's something they could add in the future like hey what if we had like ai just to be around you know like it would mm -hmm. be nice for people who don't want to be playing with randoms um but it's not like the end of the world like these, these like it's it's tough because for me to be like i don't want this the game to be always online but you really should be online because you really shouldn't be playing this by yourself mm -hmm. but yeah it sucks to see the servers in this state but i also know that it's not going to be forever so you can fix servers you can't fix a bad you can't fix awful core gameplay like core mechanics sucking you can't do anything about that mm -hmm. but bad servers you could get better servers Hundred, hundred, and again, they're they're on the way to doing that. And this is this is one of those games where I get some people will be frustrated, but once it's ready, you know what I'm saying. Once it's ready, everybody's gonna be crawling back to it, like just to feel the buzz. And once they get the taste of it, they're gonna be like, okay, this is some serious stuff. So I think the the goodwill that the the goodwill and transparency that the that the the studio heads, leadership that have, that developers have shown from Arrowhead and the experience itself and the allure of the experience itself has garnered it enough time to be like yo listen yeah I, we get it you're not the you guys nobody expected this you didn't expect this playstation didn't expect this nobody did take your time you know what i'm saying work with work with urgency and purpose but you know what i'm saying get the servers right and we'll be there and, and i i think a lot of people are really giving it grace again even even the wait time e even i was meme in it he was i was just creating a meme for it because i'm that excited too because it was another game that like again the servers didn't you know again servers weren't working or whatever i'm not meme in it i don't care i'm just like whatever but but i'm i'm excited to play this like it, it's created that it's created fomo almost instantly and that's when you know you got some real good shit on your hands when you create fomo this and again this power world elden ring it's that it, it's it's in that ballpark you know what i'm saying and i, I don't i don't want to wholly judge a game's success and a game's reception by the community response but that's a that's a pretty big indicator if people you never know are talking about yeah now we're all army wives uh, of, 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 of hell divers you know what i'm saying like we got to pack lunches and stuff like that they're going to, they're going to enlist on tiktok if they're creating whole trends and waves and hashtags that are just like you know just spawn out of the blue like a couple days after this game releases you got to give it it's it's credit and it's plaudits man and it's crazy because they're there and they're already thinking of yo they already have the what's next in there you know what i mean i think everything that, that that they're doing is set up and really conducive to having a strong community presence like look at even how the map is set up you know what i mean i saw mm -hmm. a tiktok i saw a tiktok of um some dude he was looking at the world map he right he was like hey man all the real ones is fighting you know what i'm saying the automatons on this planet i see 120 of y'all on this yeah. easy ass planet yeah. i see 120 thousand y'all lollygaggers you know what i'm saying yeah. lollygaggers and he was getting on people to go go to the other planets to help spread democracy that way and looking at it from that view that creates so much more again community connection that this is just like a, I don't have to speak on how good this good this game is from a gameplay standpoint because one I haven't played it all the way through so I can't give you that you know, full in depth I can only tell you from what I'm seeing but I can already tell you know what I'm saying it's a good game it's a good game from a mechanical standpoint from the gameplay loops all that stuff but yeah. I, I'll give you the definitive when I actually get into it 
but seeing the community connection and how they set those lines up how they build those bridges that makes it a dangerous combination that makes it something that can last a, a, a the test of time because there's that automatic that internal that embedded community aspect yo there's 120,000 y'all send out the, the the apb on twitter or whatever we all gotta go to this planet we all gotta go to malevola lake we all gotta do mm -hmm, this man mm -hmm. we gotta clear out like they, they, they have this 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 whole this whole world this whole thing that is conducive to we're gonna interact because we're all in this fight together and we have to all pull our weight for democracy you know what i mean it's just no, that yeah. it's that it just feels all connected it, it all feels intertwined it all feels like one system uh when you look at the experience and that to me is something that is that's something that they're set up to be a main a main big time fixture for a very long time to come even look at it, they talked about the roadmap they were like yo our roadmap is complete our approach what we want to do is completely different from what we you know wanted to before the game was coming out like they're thinking about new worlds new enemy types new weapons all that stuff to really keep the game going and i'm like yo again like, like we say with almost every live service game to some extent or continually updating game if you have your roadmap set up in a very fun way and you have enough depth in the game you can last you can go hit another stratosphere if you're ready to go and to me so far so good they just gotta keep that up but you know <laughs> look what happened you get a good game you get a good experience you don't again harp too much on monetization stuff and, and try and force it down people's throats and you get playstation's best selling game on pc ever like like you yeah. know what i mean i'm just saying it makes sense to drop more games pc day and date playstation i think it's you're already joining the wave i already know it's y'all time but i'm just saying y'all could have did this from time ago and life could have been easier that's all i'm saying yeah and i and like the, the last thing i, I want to touch on that i think is really like important to note that i think a lot of people resonate with is just like those moments that you have in games that you will talk about like mm -hmm. forever like even like small moments that i've had with uh uh martino which was like we were like fighting these these bugs and they were all around me so i led them toward a hell bomb mm -hmm. and martino shot it and he was like yo for for democracy and i'm like <laughs> what <laughs> wiped us all out but uh, it, it was so funny because it was just like it, it worked like, yeah. like so honest, the sacrifices need to be made in the name of democracy like it's just funny funny moments like that or even just me being like in the middle of a mission and i'm like damn this is gonna be really impossible to do by myself and then i see like uh Chaus has joined uh has has come into orbit or whatever and then them dropping down and helping me out like it's it's moments like the, that, that are the, 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 the lone trumpet in the background there you thought yeah, you'd be a lone like, soldier <laughs> like i wanted i honestly wanted to like i wish i had like a sit down emo because i would have just like sat next to the bomb at that point because i knew uh, i couldn't outrun it because yeah. i had no stamina. but i wanted to be like it's it's over like it's jover is uh, really what it felt uh, like <laughs> oh my gosh that's so funny and and and, th and that's all i've been seeing at its core and it's something that it's not lost on me that a lot of games sometimes don't focus on how fun you can make it how much random shit can you put you know can you can you get players to make and how many ways can gamers apply themselves to create moments and that's what's that's the that's the biggest thing that sticks out to me about this experience and experiences over the past few years that have been like standout breakout hits again uh, uh among us you know what i'm saying like those those stratosphere of of games that have come from the blue but they are really community driven community fed and 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 spawn a lot of great organic moments how can you create a gameplay loop that brings the best out of the gamers and brings something that creates moments and it's just it's organic it's organic and it's fun those are those two words that i think really encapsulate this experience and good on them because they're doing a smash up job i i i, I want them to keep going you know what i'm saying get the server issues wrapped up play, playstation help them out do what you got to do steam all the launchers help them out do what you got to do because this is a banger this is a banger and this 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 is this is game of the year territory this is potential game of the year contender you know what i mean with i i i can say it right now this could be a potential game of the year territory type of game so you just got to keep keep your eyes on it as it goes through the rest of this year it's doing beautiful it's things not, if it's not game of the year it's 1000 percent winning we're not winning competing very heavily in multiplayer game of the year oh 100 like, like that in power world like those two it's gonna yeah. be a, a oh it's gonna be one of them too yeah oh 100 100 100 and oh shoot okay my last point my last point 
when you can talk about this game all day. <laughs> yeah, I know. We literally could. My last. This is my last point, though. This is my last point. Hey, what 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 have I been saying about co-op games, man? Co-op games have always been the shit. Couch co-op. It's it's one of the purest forms of gaming ever. And when you bring a fun experience into a co-op genre, look what happens. Look what happens. Co-op mm -hmm. gaming to the world. Co-op gaming to the world. Co-op gaming to the world. I don't care who you are. Co-op gaming has always been one of the best ways to play a game. And when it's centered around that experience and it's centered around that, oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Co-op gaming is the shit. Bring it back. Do more. All right. That's all I had to say about that. <laughs> I had to get on that soapbox, man. I'm going to push the co-op agenda all day. I'm going to slut for co-op. Um okay but let's move on here to the second big story of the past uh week week or so uh there's been a big big xbox business update that has now been uh you know in the air for a few days now i think for about five six days uh we took some time you know let it let it aerate let it let it have some time to marinate and stuff like that uh listen we've got the news we've got a couple of new updates Let's, wa let's walk backwards up through the changes and we can talk about them. But, you know, the the big the big wigs of Xbox sat down. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Matt Booty, Phil Spencer, uh, Sarah Bond, they all sat down and gave their perspective, gave the updates on what's been going on. And let's talk about it. You know, from the bottom of the list up, they said, hey, we're going to get, an, again, a next-gen Xbox is gonna, in development. They said, you know, it's going to be probably the biggest technical leap uh, for Xbox, for any console in history. Again, Game Pass is still going to get games day one. Game Pass will still only be on Xbox and PC. There is no fundamental change in their exclusivity plans, so that, you know, again, bleeds into the statements on Game Pass, how they're approaching it. Uh, they have about 34 million Game Pass subscribers right now. Uh, Diablo 4 has been announced as coming to the Game Pass on March 28th uh, as the beginning of their Activision and uh, Activision Blizzard King partnership and, and their acquisition strategy. They're starting to bring those Activision games onto Game Pass and the big thing was they said that four games are going multi-platform four ex four first party titles from xbox will be going to the playstation and the nintendo switch in the near future uh again there was comments on if there will be more on the line um they said not at this moment and they were unnamed in uh the four the four games were unnamed in the uh video itself but uh there's been a lot of talk around what what games we already expect uh, I believe the four games were Pentiment, Hi-Fi Rush, um, uh, Sea of Thieves, and there was one more that I completely forget. Um, what, what was what was the fourth game? The fourth game, it was, yeah, Pentiment, Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves, and I feel like it was... Um, dang, I, I'll come back to the fourth game. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> but <laughs> but in, in an essence, they're really starting to consider this again this 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 move into multi-platform we knew it was coming for a while we heard the reports from the, from the top of this year that again they're already making that move uh and and really starting to think about multi-platform stuff uh among other things when how do you feel about it i thought it was interesting but i'm not necessarily super surprised again xbox xbox is now in the game making business in a in a bigger way than than i believe any other uh, hardware publisher is I, I, i'm saying this as if like hardware publishers there's many of them but like mm. um xbox is really really pushing for their place in making video games and i think they kind of like the same way like nintendo makes a lot a lot of the nintendo bangers nintendo owns and i think that's where a lot of the nintendo money comes from and maybe they're taking a page out of their book and they're like Yo, if we can control a lot of like the actual games instead of the hardware it's not going to matter who buys it because we're still going to be getting bread from it um hi-fi rush is an amazing game i can't i think the playstation community is really going to enjoy it and it's also a game that i think um certain games i think just live out their lives you know hi-fi rush i feel like after three months everybody who was interested and wanted to play it we're gonna play who didn't have play who who weren't on playstation got to play it amazing it, it lived its, its cycle on the xbox on the pc why not expose it to new uh to new consumers who weren't able to enjoy it right why not let places shit you could even give it to playstation's help to put it on the playstation plus and they will still make some money out of it because it's a game that's been out for, this is what a year maybe two years removed now from when the game dropped we have had um oh, we've already had our time with it um games like <laughs> diablo coming to game pass oh man so excited uh, i paid <laughs> I, I paid for that game i'm not and i haven't even beat the game um but that's cool i 
am just kind of like happy to see games like Sea of Thieves. That is a good game to bring um to other consoles. It's the same way that I feel like Hell Divers would really succeed on PlayStation. I mean, on on Xbox. It's like mm. it's just a multiplayer game where the emphasis is finding people to play with. Why not expose your community or your your fan base to the most amount of people to play with to keep this game going? Like Hell Divers Let's say a lot of people just lost interest in it on PlayStation. What's going to happen then, you know? I'm happy mm -hmm. that it's cross plat because now you have people on PC as well. But Helldivers 2 is a really, really good game. But I don't think anybody's buying a PlayStation for just this one game. Mm -hmm. I don't. I can't really see that moving units like that. But putting it on a different con on a different console, but also getting your little cut from it, it just makes sense. So I think that these the, they're smart. The people. I mean, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be Xbox if they weren't if they weren't doing the the smart the mm -hmm. smart thing <laughs> yeah uh this is this is my thing and also the fourth game was grounded so that the names that were going oh, around amazing game yeah, banger yeah the game the games that were going around was pentiment grounded hi-fi rush sea of thieves as the rumored four again they didn't say it verbatim in the thing they wanted to keep it they keep it under wraps for the developers just sake but yeah those were apparently the four rumored games and again they didn't rule out doing more in the future but this this for this first run this is what they wanted to do and kind of drop four and see how things went um my take on it i'm more i'm more like i'm not necessarily shocked but i'm just disappointed in a lot of people but i shouldn't be because i should have expected it the overreaction was insane the overreaction was so ridiculous i don't i, I I'm, I'm baffled still at how bad people crashed out over one a plastic box two a strategy that you don't even know was confirmed or not and three, like like just a lack of a, a lack of concrete information on anything. You know what I mean? I get saying you know what could happen in your opinion, but speaking definitively, saying f Xbox and all this stuff like that, they, they people lost the console war, which there's not even a war. That shit died years ago. That's not even a thing anymore. And, and, and you know what I'm saying Japanese soldier who fought 20 years after World War II type vibes. You man is fighting for nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. like like. There was just so much crashing out over this whole topic. And when they spoke, they literally this is in line with the stuff that they've been talking about for years. This is the same path of logic that they've been committed to for years. We want Xbox to be everywhere. The Xbox ecosystem, we want to be everywhere. We want our IPs to be recognized. We want our IPs to be stronger, especially in the first party. And we want that level of cohesion between as many places as players want to play that's been their mission statement that's been what they've been trying to achieve xbox everywhere you know what i mean you can play everywhere with anybody freedom freedom and access that has been their general play their general approach to this game and stuff now looking at again those four games it's it's I, it, 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 to me the whole thing felt like okay this this pretty much makes sense to what you guys have been trying to do this entire time they're taking those games that might not be, you know, might not either have not had the best, hottest goal of it in terms of sales numbers or whatever, because they came out as a shadow drop, Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, you know, so they had great critical reception, but not many people saw the game because it only came out in the platform exclusive, and they might want to give it a better go. Um, or the game has been out for a long time in a live service format, and nobody really, you know what I'm saying? It, it dwindled out because it's been out for years now. And maybe the player base could use a little bit of a revitalization going to other platforms. So that's the grounded, you know what I'm saying? That's the Sea of Thieves. Going that way could potentially help it help its shelf life. Again, push the other updates and make it more popular. And I remember, again, we talked about this last episode, the episode before. I was like, look, with the speculation and stuff that was going on, they're either going two routes. They're either going... Sega route, which become they become third party, and they've clearly dispelled that they're staying hard. They're staying with their hardware. They're going to be in the hardware game. They're not leaving anything. Nothing really changes. So it must be the the former option, which I was like, it's it's going to be Trojan horsing basically. They're taking IPs that you know maybe aren't the in the greatest standing, you know, right now for their brand, and they're putting them on other platforms to one give them more money. First and foremost, they need more money. They need to justify how much money they pay for Activision Blizzard and how much money they're paying out to sustain this entire ecosystem that they call Xbox. This is huge. They, they got a lot of shit to cover. They need a lot of money back or else they're going to be in the hole in a lot of different ways. You know what I mean? So they have to they have to justify these purchases and going multi-platform with a lot of their, you know, maybe bigger titles in their library 
is one going to earn them a lot of money back because they're spreading the net on being multiple on multiple platforms and 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 two it's it's just a game that maybe might have some uh, again attention or, or or you know saying a little bit of buzz to it because people might have liked it people might have saw it but they didn't play it because they don't have an xbox so as they're they're literally one of the biggest publishers in the world they're, they're probably the biggest publisher in the world just off of the gp of of they gained so many properties over this over this past 12 months so they have to justify that going not going multi-platform would be stupid and they're not being overly stupid in the other direction by giving away all their ips now this could change this could be whatever but i doubt i doubt that xbox would give away all their first party ips and not make certain ones exclusive to help fuel what they're doing i yeah. i just think from a business standpoint from a gaming strategy standpoint and they're standing in the market they're the best route for them is to take some of those first party ips move them to that side move them to other platforms so they can gain traction they can gain a little bit more standing you know what i'm saying they can get a, a bit more of a boost because prime example if hi-fi rush goes crazy on the switch it goes crazy on the ps5 and everybody loves it the developers get extra money from all the sales they get extra notoriety from all the extra exposure on the other two platforms and that might set them up for a sequel that could set them up for another series that can set them up for more 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 game development or something because they got money rolling in and xbox wins because they just put their put that game that they own out there you know what i'm saying by proxy and they, they get more money back they get more money back on that investment and they can start building up what they want to do now do, is the second one going to be exclusive is it going to stay multi-plat can they have some exclusive deals that they can make a little bit more you know what i'm saying alluring on an xbox platform rather than a pc or, or a ps5 or switch pl a platform you know what i mean they can divvy up a game that way and they're this right now is just them dipping the toe it's just them charging horsing they, there's a lot of ways they could take it again the cat's not out the jury's not out yet on whether they want to bring again like the, the people were saying the gears of wars and all that other stuff like that multi-platform who knows halo could be multi-platform we don't know yet we don't know what they're going to be planning or thinking or doing but all i know is for now this is in line with they've what they've always talked about so in general this is that was really like a nothing show because they could have put this in an email for real and people people would have gotten the same message this was nothing yeah. crazy to tell but it was just a crazy uproar from people flapping their gums and not knowing what they're talking about and crashing out over the plastic box over some stuff that they didn't understand at the time you know what i mean like they let the rumors like completely take it take over their 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 day and their trajectory they was planning to quit xbox bro again imagine imagine you're 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 a console you're a console war guy and you crash out you're on the timeline saying f this f that you're adding all the people you're adding phil spencer and all them stuff like that and then they come out with this and then they're like oh that probably wasn't that bad ah okay what do you go where do you go from here how do you look how do you look yeah. so yeah. foolish bro foolish man I, I just this just makes sense this just makes sense this this is what they've this is what they've been working towards not necessarily as an end goal but this fits with their strategy and their approach for the past what seven years eight years and this this should come as not really a big surprise to anybody this really shouldn't this is this just changes how much you're going to see them on other platforms because they need money and because they just bought literally they had the biggest gaming acquisition of all time so they're going to need to do something to gain more money in the short term again we'll get to sony because they're do they're doing stuff as well just to gain more money in a, in a different market in a tighter market and stuff like that everybody's making moves to make more money this falls in line with the strategy to make more money that's just it's as simple as that and people people get games in more places cool there really should be no you know what i'm saying no 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 fuss over this honestly you're not losing crazy exclusives you know what i'm saying at this point in time halo's not going so y'all can relax on that you know what i'm saying not even like half of y'all play halo right now anyways but it, it it's not as bad as what people think and it this has been an underlying this has been a footnote in the underlying theme of of what xbox has been approaching this entire time like this this is not to me this is not you know life-changing news nothing really changes yeah it's it's just like first off if you're over 12 and you're having this argument um, <laughs> please get a grip Facts. it doesn't make because i'm i i can't imagine you've been playing xbox your whole life and now they're like yo we're gonna put a couple games like what are you gonna quit gaming i'm mm. sure i would love for you to do that please actually do that if if that's what it takes please <laughs> add more games onto the sub but what you were saying is correct i don't think that they're gonna do 
a bunch of games on all on all platforms. If anything, what they'll start doing, which is what exclusivity really is going to become, I think. Like in the, I think in the future there will be no true exclusives. I think we're gonna get to a point where everything is gonna be just a very egregiously timed exclusive. Mm -hmm. So like God of War Ragnarok came out in what 2022. Um, I believe yeah. that game will not go on an X would not go on an Xbox if 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 my assumption of, of exclusivity is, is true they would put like Ragnarok on Xbox 2026 like again mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you put it on a system that isn't the main system when everybody on your main system has already played this game 17 times like I does not matter that Hi-Fi Rush is going on PlayStation because at the end of the day everybody who wanted to play Hi-Fi Rush and has played Hi-Fi Rush and Anybody who was like, hey, I'm going to buy a console for Hi-Fi Rush has already done that. They would have already done it by now. If that game is so good, you would buy a console for it. You're not waiting three years to buy the console for Hi-Fi Rush. You're waiting maybe maybe a couple months and then you're like, I, I'm kind of over it now. And then when they throw it on PlayStation, you're definitely buying it. You know, it just from any logical, normal brain, like it makes sense. It's not the end of the world and i also don't think that it, it dilutes the ip by letting other people play it like who cares and matt and even if people were like if you give it to xbox if you give god of war to xbox and xbox is like oh this game sucks they're going to be reviewing this game three years later like you're already you're, you already beat mm -hmm. it it doesn't matter what they have to say the game's already out you know like get a grip y'all there's so much more important things in the world than than where you you're playing your games and when you're playing your games like get a grip mm -hmm. Bro, talk. I, I, I have nothing further to add, man. Get a grip, you bums. Oh, my gosh. All right. We can move into the other stories for the week. Uh, got quite a few to actually run through and rattle through. Uh, first and foremost, uh, yes, the game is out, but it's time to talk about the status now. See, uh, no, I was going to say Sea of Thieves, not Sea of Thieves, not you guys. You're good. Skull and Bones, the other guys, the other C game, <laughs> the other C game. Uh, it's been uh, defended and trying to be justified by uh, Ubisoft uh, man in charge, Eve Guillermo. He's defended the decision to put Skull and Bones at full price at $70. And he's basically, he's called it a, a quadruple A game. He called it the world's first quadruple A game. And, you know, it's, it's, the game is out. People have been experiencing it. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's there. You know what I'm saying? They had their they had the roadmap and all that stuff like that. And it's 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 triple A, I guess. When how do you feel about it being triple A? <laughs> I mean quadruple it's A. Not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Um, it's not. Uh, I've seen people I've seen people talk about it. I haven't really seen anything. I saw one person be like, yo, this one's kinda fun. Um, I do believe that like this game may be fun to some. Uh, I've played it and when I when I was playing the beta. I think I got an hour in before I quite literally could not continue to play the game. It is like a lot of games that I've played in the past, which is why I could not continue to go go through with it. Mm. It is cool if you like pirates. I think if you like pirates and sailing, man, this game is probably super gas to you, but I have really no interest in it. In it. The, the ship, play, you know, moving the ship and shit, like mm. sailing, that's the word. Sailing the ship <laughs> is fun, but... Everything else is kind of just like whatever. Like, oh, I'm going to go acquire these resources. It's just sailing your ship next to a shore, doing a little mini game, bringing it back. I could see people really enjoying this game. Me, myself, not really, to be honest with you. Um, because it felt like a ship simulator to me. Um, I, like, I think it would have been, a, I think something like um, Sea of Thieves works so well because you and your your friends can get together on one ship and you know have hijinks and yada 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 whereas this is like all right guys let's, let's sail our fleet in this direction and go do and go pick this up so we can go sail our fleet in this direction and go do that like it's okay calling it a quadruple a game i feel like is a choice uh i think the person who did this did it on purpose i think they are I don't know. I, if I saw that shit after my game was being delayed and pushed back in, in development hell and you guys try to kill it multiple times and you're calling it, oh, it's a triple A game. It's the best game I ever played. I would call you a condescending prick because why are you why are you spicing it? 
right? Why are you spicing it? Mm. Because you, you, we all know this game isn't received. And it's not at the state that we would have wanted to release when we would have wanted to. But you're over here, like, gassing it like it is. Bro, motherfuckers wasn't sitting here gassing. Like, you weren't saying it's a quadruple A game when Unity dropped, right? And mm. the fucking people didn't have faces. And it was just eyes and teeth, right? <laughs> you weren't saying quadruple A game. Quadruple A game quality, right? No, you're an asshole. Um, happy they got the game out. I think that in and of itself, if that's I was a, the director, a, I'd have been like, hey, I don't give a fuck miracle. what happened. We did it. It is <laughs> out of our hands now. I hope everybody the best do not talk to me for the next three weeks of my life. <laughs> I'm going to be Bro. taking leave. Bro. <laughs> you say it's a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> that's lebron levels of lying right there in our faces i ain't never seen somebody go so quick to lie like that bro that is crazy i'm gonna be i'm gonna keep it a stack bundle with you dog i was i was watching people play because i definitely wasn't buying this game for for whatever price i was not doing that i was i, I didn't even care no um watch somebody play and you know what i'm saying they that person he was going through it and he was, you know, checking out the game. At some point, he went to go farm, I guess, farm resources or whatever, get resources on the ship or, or on the on the on the map or whatever. And he goes to multiple points. And uh at some point he gets to one of them where the where the resources is marked. And he says, Yo, th there's no there's no there's no there's no resource, it's not there. And they figured out from that that resources that are taken on the map aren't marked off when they're taken. So the spots are there. Maybe they respawn, maybe they don't. But at that point in time, he said, yo, there's no resources. Other players just took them on the map and it didn't show him where to find, you know what I'm saying? It, di it didn't show like that they were gone. It just didn't indicate that there were no more resources in that area. So he just wasted his time going all the way over there to get some resources when they were not there in the first place. They could have been easily marked off. And it's just like, damn, bro. I, I, this could, you literally could have just stripped black flag dlc you literally could have just stripped it as black flag dlc like 10 years later and people would have batted an eye you could have just waited for the remake of black flag because apparently that's what y'all are doing like there's a million different things i could have did instead of pimp out one part of an old assassin's creed game that you know what i'm saying people would have just waited for the remake for anyways but to call it quadruple a is insane i i blame ubisoft's decision makers uh, the developers, I feel so sorry for y'all because y'all had to sit through 10 years of this hell um, through, again, this bad decision, the game changing hands, delays, development hell, the Singaporean government wanting their damn money. Uh, it, it, there's just been so much y'all have went through. And I send my heartfelt, like, just, just love and support to all the developers that had to sit through all the decision makers fumble and stumble and, and just try and justify this game when it was just going... It was going south so to get this game out again is an achievement in and of itself i want to say thank you to those developers who stuck through it uh because I, I bet you it wasn't easy please go take a nice long rest go go play a good game uh like it's 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 so tough it's so tough but bro don't ever call this shit anywhere near triple uh quadruple a game again don't ever do that in your life bro you guys literally dropped a great game in prince of persia the lost crown and your promo has stopped for that game i have not you know what i'm saying like your promo you should be pushing that game to the moon right now that should be your flagship right now until you drop some other shit but no nah it's it's skull and bones baby you know what i'm saying and this is the thing that also pissed me off though the the marketing for it because you got michelle rodriguez to do that she drives cars what does she have to do with the ship what does michelle rodriguez from fast and furious have to do with the ship that's on the water tell me when do you have an answer um i don't and i think it's really interesting they got her on this because i could definitely see michelle rodriguez making the comment of like why are you still playing video games after you're 16. I, literally like, I, could, I could literally see the disinterest was there and again it wasn't even a car it wasn't even a car you're on foot oh my you're on foot and you're on a ship what does that have to do there was a submarine 
in in in, in Fast and, in Fast and Furious like one time. They were in Miami and saw some boats. You know what I'm saying? They slept on those in Too Fast Too Furious. That's as close of an association of Michelle Rodriguez has to like any brand identification for this game's marketing. You just got her in because people remotely know her. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's Letty. That's it. She was available. That's what they got her in. I like some of the Lady cameos. What the fuck does she know about seafaring? What does she yeah. know? Does Bro. she know what port or starboard are? Facts. Like, what are you talking about, man? What are we doing? What are we I doing, mean, bro? Ubisoft, come on, man. I, she, she might know what Porter Star but we don't know that she knows that, and that's well, the problem. And that's, <laughs> that's the problem. That is the problem right there. They, 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 they don't care. They don't know, or they not just paying. They're not paying enough attention. It, it, it's just, oh my gosh, it's just a mess, bro. Literally everything wrong. Everything went wrong when Desmond died. Everything went wrong when Desmond died. And I'm not talking about the size Creed itself. I'm talking the whole company. Everything went wrong when Desmond died. I don't know. I don't know what happened, bro. Uh, skull and bones, man. Quadruple. <laughs> I'm moving on, man. Next story here. Uh, so Sony, uh, they've been in the news this week for a couple of different things. But the first big uh, hit that we saw. Um, so they're apparently they're not releasing any major first party titles from existing franchises until march 31st 2025 so they basically came out and said 2024 it's gonna be it's gonna be a blank year if you're expecting any big games from us no god of wars no uncharted no none of that stuff no nothing that you know is not coming out until 2025 so you guys gotta sit tight and get some other stuff for our you know just 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 hold on because we're not dropping anything for you you know what i'm saying until next year that's crazy first party so when how, how do you feel about that um, I'm currently playing two different JRPGs, <laughs> a uh, Hell Divers, League of Legends, one my girlfriend wants to play. I am kind of full on games. I'm perfectly fine with no games till 2025. I don't really need more. It sucks for people who who want more, but I'm I'm kind of cool. Take your time, bro. Like there's there's a lot of things. Oh, I still need to go back and beat Boulder's Gate. Like, there's so many games that need to get mm -hmm. beat. I'm fine with them pushing things. It's kind of wild for them to say that, like, because it does feel bad when you're like, well, that's kind of far away. But March is quite literally in a couple days from now. So I'm not really pressed about it because I know that by the time March 2025 gets here, I'm still going to be like, oh, wow, I didn't even notice because all mm -hmm. of the games that are dropping. And it's also like first party games. That doesn't include things like final fantasy that doesn't include a bunch of different play games that are, will be on playstation it's just more so like hey we, we're gearing up for something major so it seems like 2025 is going to be a bananas ass year mm -hmm. for for gaming in general because we already have uh one of the biggest game most anticipated games releasing in 2025 death stranding 2 and then that little <laughs> indie game known as uh gta 6 so, like it's already a really big game a really big year for gaming oh man that's funny <laughs> you're a funny guy you're a funny guy you know that <laughs> but uh again my my take on it is um i think we talked about it again i think we talked about it before man look at look at us man rate this podcast five stars if you've seen a previous episode i'm pretty sure we talked about playstation not having a crazy year and xbox could could you know jump out and have a bigger year in terms of of drops you know what i'm saying uh so here's the thing um for playstation it it's not necessarily a negative None, none, none of this is a negative, in my opinion, because the spread of games, how games are developed, it's it's approaching unsustainable points anyways. So expecting delays like this to a certain degree is, is I feel like it's normal and, and, and we need to address the root of the problem, which is how games are developed and just the patience for them. You know what I'm saying? If they're going to go bigger and grander, we got to have develop more patience for some of those. And if they're a little bit more unsustainable, we have to figure out how to rein them back in uh, to be sustainable. Uh, but that's a whole nother conversation. This is fine for a PlayStation because they still have games that they're going to drop. Again, Hell Divers literally just dropped for them. You want to be technical? That is that is one of their properties. That's that they they have they have publishing rights over that stuff. It's a part of their brand. They just dropped again one of the biggest games of the year so far. That probably is going to have a lot of shelf life this year. Um, the Until Dawn remake is coming for them, which is again it's not a big game, but it's something that people are going to check check for or something like that. So they have a couple of. They have a couple of games and they have new IPs that they could introduce this year. You know what I'm saying? They could have a couple things in the back pocket that can set and platform the new IPs up, which they're in desperate need of. Again, I'm going to go back to Helldivers every time. They needed something multiplayer at its core 
they were desperate they are so desperate to find that multiplayer thing and they could have found something very very good in hell divers and that could be cultivated through this year and that could spawn into again something else that really saves their ass when it comes to multiplayer experiences at uh, core multiplayer experiences in their first party so there's one base covered and again back to one's point the backlog is so deep bro if you don't i i'm not gonna lie if you if you don't have a backlog and you're just like covering games left right and center you know what B big ups to you but for the rest of us normal people <laughs> like we got backlogs out the wazoo like i got crazy i got so much games to play there's so many games to play that i have to catch up on for the past like <laughs> two to seven years in random intervals but again this should be I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at this. If you're going to take time to say, hey, our major games are, it's a little bit longer. You're going to have to wait a little bit longer. That's fine because they have enough in the bank and you're giving, you're giving your other games like Helldivers, like again, like other releases or whatever to have a bit more breathing room and be promoted by PlayStation to give them a platform to be, you know, to, to succeed. This is something that I want to see. If there's newer IP or IP that may be lesser known, giving them that platform to promote them and see what they do in a space where your, your heavy hitters are gone, that can propel new stars. That can create new big experiences. So I'm not mad at them at them having this decision and saying, yo, our major shit, not coming until next year. And this gives a chance for, again, games like Helldivers, you know what I'm saying, games like there's a new IP that they were dropping. I, it was some called Concord or whatever. I don't know what the game is exactly, but again, new IP, something that they could drop like, like two to three, three to four experiences this year. They could drop and that gives them a lane to hack and platform that platform something that maybe is not going to be in playstation forefront in you know in a year where everything's available and out for them so this is good this is good give the newer stuff a chance if you're if you're like complaining about oh we don't see last of us this year we don't see a god of war this year we don't see uncharted this year they'll have their time they'll have their time and they're not going anywhere trust me the way playstation moving the way all these companies are moving the ips you know and love are not moving they're not going anywhere it's going to take a little bit more time to see them but go support the newer stuff that you haven't tapped into just yet. And again, this, this gives PlayStation a really good time frame to do just that. Yeah. All right. So pushing over through the next news, um, the worst company uh, 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 in, in the world right now. Well, not in the world, at least in the gaming space. They're they're back at it again. Um, so Embracer Group, guys, uh, their CEO, uh, Lars Wingerfors, he kind of just, you know, was making some statements at uh, uh, when he was interviewed recently, and he was just basically saying, "Hey guys, layoffs are something. Some layoffs are something that everyone needs to get through." Uh, quote: You can debate the speed we went to build organic growth, but the ambition was obviously to aggressively organically grow the company. Now we need to adjust for that. Uh, you know, when your comments on on the CEO's stance, how they've been moving, and just uh, the case of Embracer so far. That's a that's a statement. That's a uh, there's just a lot to unpack there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Would would you consider would you consider as a content creator trip? Would you consider buying followers um, organic growth? No. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, uh, would you consider buying content like you, you paying me to make videos for you? Would you consider that or organic content from you? No, I cannot claim I cannot claim that as organic growth. It is growth in some way, but that's definitely inorganic. If I'm paying yeah. a team to produce something for me, it's growth. But to me, it's inorganic. They they bought a bunch of companies, so I don't know how the fuck that shit is organic. They didn't really like. Yeah. They didn't hire people. They didn't they didn't create these companies. They went and bought a lot of them. A lot of them. They bought a, a bunch of a bunch of mm -hmm. bullshit. Um, which is the one the one thing that's a little annoying about the statement. Um. But we can jump into the bigger the bigger issue is um, not everybody has to go through it because he has a job mm -hmm. like not everybody's going through it because he's he's not like did he get laid off? What's the what's the board mm -hmm. looking like? How many people are losing money here? You know, untouched. Um, I don't know. It seems like Embracer Group is full of shit. That's mm -hmm. what it seems like to me. And I think this guy needs to stop talking and remove his head from his posterior. I think that would be the best thing for everybody. And I think they need to stop buying shit, stop doing shit. Because um, if you're going to buy shit to, to just fire me, bro, it sounds like you didn't have enough money to begin with. You know, like it just it just doesn't seem 
it just doesn't make sense to me. But hey, what do I know? I'm sure Embracer Group is doing a bunch of great things right now, and I'm sure all their games are succeeding very well. Uh, mm -hmm. Truly, I wish the people at Embracer Group that aren't the devs the worst. Safely, of course, not yeah. like uh, harm. But yeah. fuck y'all. You guys suck. I hope the CEO loses a lot of money. I need that man to be making 60K a year by year's end. <laughs> That's what I would like to see. I would like to see that man getting laid off and making less money than a lot of people. My thing is, in a, in a week where people were claiming a really shitty game is quadruple A, that was not the worst statement made. You yeah. know what I mean? That, like, that's it just, wild. It just was not the worst statement made. Like, not everybody's thinking through a business lens, man. People just want to have a healthy, safe, organic, actually organic gaming space. But again, the, the thought process of CEOs is they're committed to their shareholders first and to the space that they work in second. It's just capitalism at its finest and it's bullshit. I, I just what 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 enrichment have you done to any of the studios that you've acquired to produce video games? All you've done is help your bottom line. You know what I'm saying? And there was somebody who commented on, again, we did that that, that piece last week on Embracer Group, and it was like, we made it its own segment. Shout out to YouTube slash at no cooldown. Um, we made it its own segment. And there was somebody who was like, I don't see the bad in this. Just get rid of the non-essential workers. I'm like, non-essential workers in a non-essential space, that makes no sense for one. You know what I'm saying? Gaming necessarily isn't a non-essential space. It's an art it's an industry yep. that's based on an art form. So if you want to put whatever to me, again, it's 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 an essential thing based on the enrichment of, of arts and so and culture and social, you know, you know, social status and whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? Social, social dynamics and whatever. I it's it's that term doesn't really fit in that in that form, in my opinion. And the fact that what 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 does he mean non-essential? What does he mean non-essential? Because you can you can you can like you know get rid of a bunch of like QA testers and all stuff like that. But when you're when the company they like say Eidos, you know what I'm saying, or or, or a part of Square or whatever, whatever Crystal Dynamics, whatever part that Embracer owns, if they go through a period of crunch, like a ridiculous crunch, and the game comes out shitty, but if they had more support from the people that they didn't find in the first place, who's gonna be taking the blame there? You know what I'm saying? Like who's 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 pointing the finger to who? The team that they had to survive through that? Or Embracer, who made the decision to cut all those people when they they could have again taken a bit of hit and the stock price and their shareholders and the, and, the, and the dividends that they're paying out, but they came out with a better ex experience that maybe would have garnered them a lot more money and brought them the dividends that they were looking for in the first place. So what's 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 the what's the what's what's the difference? What's gonna break? What what, what part of cooking needs to crumble? You know what I mean? Like it. Yeah. To me. And it's yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was say it, I, I hate that statement because I don't think that any worker is non-essential because mm -hmm. even if you're if if you're sitting at a, at a cash register right and you have another mm -hmm. cash cashier, a you will get the line down. You guys won't be fucking suffering the whole the whole shift. If you got rid of the other cashier, yeah, people can still buy things because you're there. You're the you're you're an essential cashier. You're we have one. Does that not make your day fucking awful? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does that not make shit? the worst so why the what is this what is this idea of non of, of these people are being non-essential well, who are the non-essential people it's a real question because if all these games that are coming out have been using non-essential workers maybe we need maybe if all these people all the games that came out have been using only the most essential workers maybe we need some non-essential workers because suicide skill killed the justice league look at that game right mm -hmm. pretty okay imagine if we had more motherfuckers working on it more ideas more people making shit right or even just like hell divers for example what if we had more fucking people what if we had more servers like what is well you know it, it's good that they cut down the the non-essential servers now they need servers now they need this shit like oh man this skull and bones is buggy maybe they need more fucking qa testers i hate people saying non-essential shit as if there are people doing nothing and getting a lot of money oh wait there are people doing that but they're not <laughs> considered non-essential they're considered the people who get paid the fucking most so what are we talking about here who are the non-essential workers because the people who are working are pretty fucking essential mm -hmm. dead ass bro dead ass, ass i just i just find it funny that there are actual people we are actual consumers that side with the people 
who are just making the decisions to potentially, you know, cut life supports from the, the studios who make the games they're experiencing, then the studios themselves to hopefully try and enrich them and support them to make good games for us. Like, I, I'm just like, bro, there's there's clearly a line here. I, I, I just don't I just don't get why certain consumers are like, oh, who cares? It is what it is, because they don't see what happens in the background that affects what games you play. And that's why, and again, I feel like half of these people that that are ignorant to what goes on in the gaming industry, again, they don't care. They're just playing the same four games or whatever the big experiences that they that they try to do, or they're just they're just very very. This is very and not dumb, but just very very unaware of things in general. Not just specifically the gaming industry, just everything in general of how stuff works and where, where how things get done, the process of actual again development and how much that is squandered when a lot of people get laid off if that's the point again i'm waiting for them to find some actual enriching activity for the companies that they've acquired but all they've done is shave them and cut them down cut them down at the kneecaps and save their bottom line this is all that they've done so far you know what i mean over this past run of a few years i get it for some people some of the dweebs or whatever embrace has been here for 20 30 years my fault thank you for the information correct but you don't have to sound so wild doing it like what they've been doing in this latest run of acquiring companies very aggressively over the past few years they haven't done anything to justify any enrichment for these studios that i've seen if you can correct me and point it out to me please i'll be more than happy to receive some new information but from what we've seen all they've done was again consolidate and cut off any support to make these studios better that's it mm. All right, uh, moving on here, we had another look at No Rest for the Wicked. They had a quick little eight-minute uh, IGN stint ahead of their March 1st uh, event. Uh, I think it's Wicked Inside. Uh, they're going to talk about it again. We we uh, saw this game at the Game Awards uh, last December, uh, coming out soon. Uh, it just just looks really, really interesting. Again, that, that kind of top-down, Souls-born-ish vibe. Uh, really, really gritty uh, art style. Uh, when what you what you make of what you were seeing? Oh, it looks phenomenal. I can't wait to, to play this game. I seeing the trailer and like seeing. I, I, I'm happy that I was like on the money with it because I was like, it feels like a Soulsborne, uh, mm -hmm. not a Soulsborne, but a Souls-like game. Yeah. Um, so I can't wait to play. It looks really, really. The the art style is, is stunning. It is so it is so beautiful. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. The the thing that the thing that really like i like about it is it feels not necessarily claustrophobic but it feels like like full pause like it feels like again full of life in it you know what i'm saying again like decrepit life you know what i'm saying it yeah. looks gloomy as shit but the environment the rain physics all that stuff it feels like you can really get lost in this stuff and, and my my fear with these types of games is that there might be a little bit too much of a blur there might be not there might be not enough differentiation between you know your characters build and how the art style is to actually you know like like differentiate him from the world he might get like you know what I'm saying visually he might get lost in some of like the, the the terrain and stuff like that and whatever but i feel like they they did so well with kind of like a, a a flashlight or like a spotlight that's on the character as he goes through the world you know what i'm saying to really create that little zone of differentiation in a lot of spots i think mm -hmm. it's really cool and again, you can see just the, the environment, bro. You can see the, the rain clouds passing through the moon, and then sometimes it'll like it'll make the the flash of the over the player even better. Like there's just so much stuff. Like the gameplay looks super super like punchy. The gameplay looks super punchy, and I love that. I love when you can feel and get into the gameplay hits. You can feel the rhythm of it. I, it just looks good. It, yeah, the, the biggest thing that strikes to me is just the environment, bro. The environment looks so, so good, so, so dynamic. I think there was some, one point where, like, uh, like again, the grass is moving, the rain is, like, really mo all dynamic and, and flowing in one direction. Like, it, it's it's seriously, it's seriously polished. It looks seriously, like, I'm 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 very impressed with how, how much this is. It just feels like a really living, breathing environment on top of, again, what the gameplay looks as really punchy. So I can't wait to see more of it. Uh, that Warwick the Torn boss, that big ass, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't even know what to call it on four legs and a sword. That thing needs to chill out. That's scary as hell. But I can't wait to see more on Wicked Inside on the first. And yeah, man, I, th I think this team has got something. The team, the team has definitely got something. All right. 
uh pushing forward here uh i know we had the dice conference uh like uh, and the dice awards probably last week or the week before uh just some funny just funny tidbits about you know just the industry trends and what kind of the beat on the industry from some insiders were uh shout out to danny o'dwyer again he was there and he provided just a couple of, of thoughts about what people were thinking about the industry where it's going in terms of the next few months to the next couple of years just the general outlook had a couple of notes from his his tweet out there and he kind of read uh, a couple of points one everyone's shit talking embracer surprise surprise uh and uh there's minimal investment coming from publishers uh and many uh, venture capitalists have tightened some of those belts on investment too uh there's been this ever increasing cost for AAA development and apparently it's going to be a, it's a real problem given you know that little core market expansion and a lot of people have been saying in the industry 20, 2024 is a survival year it's not necessarily an expansive year it's got to try and make it through and tough through 2024 and uh you know that's that's kind of some of the prevailing thoughts that were that were gleaned from you know the conference and some of the insiders so how do you feel about you know those comments when it's interesting i i like the transparency um from this person but i it's funny everybody's just talking embracer it's like that's how you know motherfuckers mm. are full of shit when they say everybody needs to go through layoffs um but it is something that we have kind of known for a, in a while like the, the how triple a games are becoming very very expensive to make um and it's interesting that they say the core market expand uh, the core mac market isn't expanding as much because mm -hmm. i feel like there was a huge boom in the tw in 2020 um and maybe that's why venture capitalists have have been tightening their belts because we're four years removed from that and the it, more people aren't playing video games i feel like if anything it, it probably went down since people are starting to go back outside but um, truly, it was. It is. It is an interesting take on things. I would love to attend this at some point in my life because it seems like an award show that I'd be more interested in. Um, because even when like I was checking out one of the other tweets, he's like, it seems here that everybody actually gives a fuck. He's mm -hmm. like, I, he's like, I really enjoyed this because it feels like everybody here gives a fuck and are very transparent about talking about the real problems when it comes to to video games uh and, and video game creations also the also minimal investment coming from publishers interesting mm -hmm. we'll remember that we'll yeah. remember that yeah i just find it funny again embrace i'm not gonna go through again but duh uh mm. i got just glad to see that corroboration um and yeah this is the big thing about this year and going into the next year which i think is gonna be pivotal it's just like that level of everybody's kind of tightening their wallets i mean everybody's tightening the walls we're in a we're hitting recessions everywhere it's probably gonna be a global recession gaming might hit a crash and the level of tightening of the wallets is i think we're starting to feel it and we're kind of approaching that problem that sean Layden talked about a couple of years ago where like again the triple a the cost of a triple a game is getting so unsustainable at this point and it's like we have to find a way to scale it back we have to find a way to find a balance for the development and the pushing of games the development cycle for the developers themselves for the strategy for creating that for seeing it through uh, you know for 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 just the strategy behind it because it's 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 getting to a point where again people not seeing their families bro people are not seeing their families for a lot of development things 200 million like i'm seeing 200 250 million is going into like the average you know what I'm saying playstation game from some of those numbers we got from the uh activision case or, or whatever files that got that got dropped from playstation like a while back like apparently again like some of these things are costing upwards of 200 million and that's crazy to think you know what i'm saying how much return you have to try and get from them it's we have to find a balance and i me personally i think that's why there's been a lot of 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 movement towards you know the double a games and there's a lot there's a lot of love in the double a games because i feel like they're inventive they're they're inventive enough to get you know again they, they get, get creatively they can be divergent from the triple a stuff that you know might be loading up and they're and they're putting enough money up but i feel like if they're doing it right if they have enough of a divergent idea again i'm, I'm a site hell divers too yet again you can you can get a lot of investment back from those games and without the level of you know as presumably without the level of intensity and cost from uh you know from that of a triple a game in comparison so uh it's 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 interesting to see where you know what i'm saying there where things are 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 lining up uh but 
my my thing is we gaming just got to hold tight for now gaming's got to try and hold tight because again we heard it from gene park we heard it from daniel dwyer we heard it from a lot of insiders uh 2024 is going to be a rougher year than last like this is this is not the last we've seen of layoffs this is not the last we've seen of studio closures stuff's going to be bad but we just got to try and hopefully tough through it and find some way for a lot of, a lot of these things to land as best as they possibly can uh because we're we're in for it this year we're in for it yeah all right uh moving on to something a little bit more positive uh from soft apparently now owns the elden ring uh trademark so they bought it from bandai namco over the past few days uh which maybe could explain some delays in certain you know dlcs that we may be hearing from but from soft miyazaki the whole squad they have full rights over uh elden ring that's fully in you know their their wheelhouse now uh one reaction to that news I think that's pretty i think it's dope honestly i wish more developers own their ips um because we know what happens when your ip goes into the wrong hands mm -hmm. and as a kojima fan i don't like when publishers own the ips because it could be well better used <laughs> in the hands of people who are actually going to do something good with it um but i'm happy for them man this is a huge this is a huge w yeah honestly again this probably explains why, again, uh, the or Shadow with the Earth Tree DLC maybe took a little bit of a delay in terms of any announcements for it. You know what I'm saying? They could be, of course, they're going to be constantly working in the background on it, but this could explain why they're like, hey, let's hold up for a minute on announcing anything because we want to fully hold this in our bag. We want to fully have this. We want to get through the process. So that explains that. But yeah, I love when studios own what they create. I love ownership. Please, if you created this stuff, do what you can to own it. Do not have it leased off to somebody else or, well, not necessarily leased, but have them have a hand in it and stuff like that. You can license it. You can do whatever. But I love when people who create that stuff own that stuff. So more. I want more of that. I want studios to be able to have say and control in the IPs that they create. And and I think there's probably no other more deserving, you know, studio that the studio to own their own IP than FromSoft with Elden Ring because they created a masterpiece and I think they deserve every bit of ownership over that as possible so uh, I love that love that man we need more of it um, and we can push on to the next thing yes this was not the last time Sony was going to pop up uh, you know what I'm saying and PlayStation was going to pop up in this show they had their whole kind of outlook meeting uh, they kind of talked about uh, again more of their strategy what their outlook has is, is going to be for the years to come and Sony president Hiroki Totoki, uh, he's kind of basically outlaid their their desire to be more aggressive in improving their margins by growing their first party with multi-platform. Again, the, the quote generally read, you know, in the past, he wanted to popularize consoles and first party titles and, and make the console popular. They wanted to make the PlayStation the best, the best, have the best games. That's simply that their their first party strategy. And now he said he personally thought there are a lot of opportunities to improve the margin. So again, growing in multi-platform ways and you know what i'm saying like primarily pc is what he's been thinking and i guess that's what the translation and what a lot of the, the the rhetoric was kind of moving towards growing and pushing a lot more on pc which 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 seems to be the case for a lot of what they've been doing you know apparently sony did take a bit of a hit in valuation they undersold their their ps5 marks by a little bit um so now they're kind of thinking of ways to really get themselves further in the business with multi-platform strategy. So, uh, when, how do you feel about their outlook and, 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 you know, kind of approach going into the next couple of years? Um, I'm really happy that they're going to do like, I, I want, I would like them to keep putting stuff on PlayStation. I think it's a really good, I, I mean, not PlayStation, keep putting things on PC. I think it's a really good idea. Um, they're kind of in just such a weird spot because it feels like they're kind of following not necessarily uh like the xbox strategy but i feel like they're kind of like going a roundabout way of doing the xbox strategy you know mm -hmm. um also the fact that like the playstation 5 is already in it's like it's entering its later stages of its life cycle is concerning um and i mm -hmm. think that this problem of like oh these triple a games are going to start to get too expensive to make this may not help that by making I'm not saying i want to make the whole uh, y'all need to y'all need to stop producing consoles but like if people are complaining about seven dollar price tags and they're saying there's just not enough money to go around for these things 
Are you sure making saying that this PlayStation is now on the way out when it came out twenty? Like it's only four. We're, it's only been four years, really. This game mm -hmm. is, came out in twenty twenty in twenty twenty. Don't get me wrong. I understand the PlayStation Four was what? How many years was it out for? Eight, maybe yeah. ten. I think it was, it was eight. I yeah, I think it was eight, right? You you don't say later stages. Later stages sounds like two years left. You mm -hmm. say we're we're getting half like you know it's it's about halfway through its life cycle that's a better thing to say in four years you may need to buy a new ps5 mm -hmm. or ps6 six or whatever understandable full on like later stages that's scary and it makes people less likely to engage with with playstation and be like you know well if i gotta save up for a new console i'm, I'm gonna cut back on buying all these goddamn games because i don't got money for this shit right now or they're just gonna be like oh just start buying a pc you know mm -hmm. um yeah i i never understand the playstation business model the, the 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 decisions they make i don't think these decisions are necessarily bad i just kind of let them rock and i have to see the results because truly they are an interesting company because i mm -hmm. i want to shit on it but they also they're also the leaders so maybe they know something i don't uh, type shit. Uh, it's it's just to me. I just you know, dread from it, dread it, run from it. Destiny still arrives all the same. Look what happened. All this all this talk about you know PCs. Uh, it, it, it shouldn't have stuff day and date. It shouldn't have quick releases. But when it's time to get some money, look where y'all ended up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah, and this is the thing. People on the outside. You, you can say that, oh man, damn, you know what I'm saying? They're just not going to PC, man. Yeah, y'all, y'all are late. This is, this is, this is like a surprise. This is like blah blah blah. This is news to me. They're going multi-platform. They're ruining what it means to be a console gamer. Who gives a shit? They need money. And if you pay attention to the cards, they've been gearing up for this, just like Xbox, but they've been doing it in their own way. When we talked about literally last year, last year, the year before, we talked about them acquiring Nixus. And Nixus does what? They primi they primarily port PC just had titles to PC. That's that was their primary function. They worked on PC ports and have had those softwares. I think it was um Blue House or something like that. They were also they were also involved with some level of development in terms of PC. And them acquiring those two studios is like that should have been ready, like you know what I'm saying, ears jump to ears jump at the sound of like, oh, so they're probably really locking in on like, you know, getting these PC ports ready. But some people didn't want they want to deny it. They want to say, oh yeah, no, nah, PC, nah, I ain't never getting stuff early. Some people said we never got Spider-Man on PC, ended up on PC. And with how much success they get instantly from the PC, from the PC market, how much success Hell Divers got day and date. Again, I'm 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 spamming Hell Divers episode, man, because it's worth it's worth it, damn it. How much, how much like clout they got day and date. How much Spider-Man, God of War, again, all these games got day and day when they when they dropped on PC. You know what I'm saying? All the way leading up to the boom that Helldivers got, you know what I'm saying, when it released at the same day as PlayStation. Like, it's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that they're going more aggressive. They've been seeing the signs ever since they decided to drop something like, oh, maybe two years later on, on PC to try to drop a, a PlayStation core title. Like it the the signs have always been there, and now they're just capitalizing. They understand. Listen, this market is getting tight. We have to find more ways to get money and, again, increase our profit margin. And the best way they're going to do that is take it to where, take their games to where they're going to sustain the most life. And that's on PC. It is on PC, whether people like it or not. So everybody's moving that way to have that in their infrastructure. Xbox moved it early because they they, they weren't getting much success from their first party. So they, they did that. They did that move early. PlayStation did that a little bit quieter. They don't they don't want to tell you that. You know what I'm saying? I don't think PlayStation people are, want, are gonna say like, oh, you know, we're dropping on PC too. But they're not gonna parade that around as their strategy. That's not really them. But they're gonna move that way because they see it as a viable outlet. And just to to kind of put that there, I would have put it past them if like this, uh, this is gonna sound this is gonna sound bad. When is gonna sound bad? I wouldn't put it past them if they have their own um, PC storefront at some point in time. I wouldn't put it past them. You think you think I'm crazy? I don't think you're crazy. I think it's 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 a it's matter of time. It's it's disgusting though, because it's another launcher that people got to have on their computers. Oh my gosh! You see, the way they would make this launcher work is if they made it so that you could play PlayStation Plus games on it, because like that was like a thing. 
um, with PlayStation Premium that you could use like PlayStation Now, mm -hmm. and sometimes I think from their words, were like some titles you'd be able to download onto your PC if they do like an Xbox Game Pass type vibe with PlayStation, it would make sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if it's just like hey, here's unless or 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 if you if this this PlayStation storefront. Is like, hey, you bought it on PlayStation, you could download it on your PC on this side. Like, if it's cross buy, it mm -hmm. would make me more inclined to buy it. But if you're just trying to get me to use a PlayStation storefront just to use a PlayStation storefront, I'm not doing that. Bro, I could, I, part of me sees it. Part of me, I, I part of me can definitely see it. And I'm like, ah, y'all are up to something, aren't you? Y'all are up to something. But again, all I'm saying is, we, we finally come to the conclusion that we've been telling y'all for years. PC gaming is a viable outlet for all these games, and it doesn't make sense that PC is denied of them. As much as you want to say it, as much as you want to deny it, console only people, PC is a good place for these games. It's good for business. You know what I'm saying? It's good for business. It's good for gaming. You see how, watch how long these Helldiver servers stay up in their lifespan because it's on PC. Watch how quickly it is, and it drop day and date compared to other games that drop only PlayStation only, and then they had to kind of go backwards or just die out because they only had the console console on population to rely on. That's all I'm saying, y'all. That's all I'm saying. People already know. Sony and Xbox, and they already know what's going on. Nintendo's an outlier. They don't give a damn. They don't, they're just going to do whatever they do. They have enough first-party stuff to say, F you to whatever policy. They're just going to drop games. But for, for, for Sony and for Microsoft... PC's always been that next frontier to get more market share and get their games out in, in the way that they want. So, boom. Told y'all. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, but moving on to the next story here. So with all the hullabaloo and 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 the and the ruckus over Avatar dropping a live action and being, you know what I'm saying, more into the game and all stuff like that, they've announced that uh, Avatar The Last Airbender competitive multiplayer fighting game is coming. We had news from Gematsu and all over the place. Maximum Games has apparently entered into a partnership with Paramount Consumer uh, to drop a, a competitive fighting game. Uh, apparently it's going to be in early access um, uh, early next year in 2025. Um, no platforms or developers were announced they kind of kept it they're keeping it under wraps for now. Any, any hopes or expectations for an Avatar The Last Airbender game? Uh... To answer the question of any hopes, the answer is no. Um, expectations. Part of me, I don't know. Part of me feels like it's not going to be a regular fighting game. Um, I don't know why in my mind when I hear the words competitive multiplayer fighting game, I feel like competitive fighting game is is, is fine. Multiplayer is kind of throwing me off. It makes it sound like they're going to make some shit like a, a Naruto Shippuden, uh, like a Shippuden, mm -hmm. what is it called? Shinobi Strikers? Yeah. That's what it was. It feels like that. I don't think it's that, but like, I don't like the word multiplayer because fighting games are all multi, like, yeah. it's two people. Like, unless they're doing <laughs> like a fucking Project L where it's going to be like a four person thing or like a, a platformer fighter, maybe. Mm. I'm mm -hmm. not really excited for this. I like the Avatar universe. I really, really do. Um, but when I think of like my fighting games, I think of like Tekken, I think about like Street Fighter, like 2D or maybe 3D if it's like a Tekken vibe. But it's kind of like, I don't like hearing these news stories about these <laughs> kinds of things because I don't know what to expect. And I know, I know it could easy, easily be something really whack. Um, and I haven't, I can't think of one good Avatar game. So, hey, I'm, I'm very reluctant. I mean, the arena, the, that, that Legend of the Arena joint was kind of fun. I, I like that. I like that one. Don't even know what that is. I, 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 I saw the one on the Xbox and I was like, oh, the, that, bur that burning other shit was not good. Sure I remember good. I remember watching a YouTube video where it was like the easiest achievements to get to yeah. easy games to platinum. <laughs> and then like you can stand right here, press one Yo. button over and over and get every they trophy. Only, I they, was like, they only had like 12 achievements or something like that, bro. It was literally a uh, dog, yeah. It was it was that's different. That's different. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not looking forward to this game. I, I'm not even looking forward to watch the trailer for this game. <laughs> I'm gonna need the game to drop, and I'm gonna need I'm gonna need verified fighting game enthusiasts to tell me this shit is gas. Like, I need I need full on. Hey, I play Tekken. I play like if Sonic Fox says this shit is gas, I'll tap it. But if I don't hear it from like 
the real the heavy hitters i'm not like like i love my boy nick nick tana if nick tana's a good choose god still not enough still not uh, enough yo, nah, nah, shout out to nick man that's tough that's tough bro oh man but no, that's fair. Um, show me, show me the game facts. That's all I gotta say. Show me the game facts. I will buy in if the game looks good. But we've been duped before. We've been duped before, and especially on the fighting game front. I, 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 I have a very, very not necessarily thin patience, but just thin tolerance. Not necessarily because it's good or bad, just because I don't play that many fighting games. I'm just like, my bandwidth for it is low. So if it's fire and it's got the good concept of Avatar on it, cool. But show me, the, show me the Carfax. Show me the Carfax. I need it all right uh pushing forward here we got a new update on a bunch of stuff from uh no man's sky omega they're still updating the game with free stuff bro they're still updating the game the trailer came with a bunch of stuff i i, I it goes deep bro there's just almost too much to it but when how'd you feel about the game you know, what they're bringing to the omega update they need to relax <laughs> they already got enough they, they announced another game they need to chill dog rv but also like Eat your heart out, Starfield. Like, man, it it's really, really funny that this game has had this life cycle. I it, it will never not it will never not be funny to me of like, wow, this game has nothing in it to now being a game that has maybe too much in it. Maybe in it like you you could either cut half of these updates and put it into a second game. The Bro. amount of updates this game has. Son, um, literally. But shout outs to the game that just keeps on giving. What I know for a fact, the people who like did not refund their their No Man's Skies purchases are like, wow, this ended up being one of the best investments. Like mm -hmm. in in like this is like this game is like a true blue, like the closest thing the gamers will get to making a, a real life investment. Like mm -hmm. paying money into a company and then watching it grow. Like because this game just has literally grown to the size of like eight games at this point literally bro like it's just uh, again they keep adding so much stuff like dog you can you can capture enemy enemy um what's it called the, the pirate freights the, the freighters and stuff like that they got more missions more more expedition stuff like i, I it's just, they keep adding so much and it's so good but damn you again like dog y you can stop now you've proven you've proven yourself please all right it's mm -hmm. again for my anime people it's like it's like when gone was really about to punch that dude on um, morale in the face you know what i mean in in the in the chimera anarch he was really about to kill that dude but killer was like all right bro you got it you got it you did you, you proved your worth it's all right you did it it's okay it's over and dog it's, it's just it's, it's crazy to see it's crazy to see but they have earned their credibility back in spades you know and then some uh, which really again it platforms them well for um again their the the new game that they're that they're coming out with but the fact that they're still supporting this years later that's a testament that's this is again this is uh, unequivocally one of the greatest comeback stories uh in gaming history and they're, they're, they're going to talk about this for a while so again sean murray and them again kudos to them sean murray even came on the stage last time in the game was acting all confident man he, he he had his chest out and stuff like that like, the growth in him himself as different a leader man. you know what i'm saying it's a different, different guy it's a different guy you know what I'm saying? He dropping memes about bushing them and stuff like that on the timeline. Like, bro, like you wasn't doing oh. this before. <laughs> you wasn't Who doing it. Who are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? But you love to see it, bro. You love to see the growth, the development, and again, long live No Man's Sky. Y'all doing, doing a lot, but I love it. All right, we're going to push forward here. This was a funny case. Uh, Kotaku article came out talking about Immortals of Avium. And uh, again, how that wasn't the best received game. Uh, and Basically, Kotaku were saying this is a grim time for single player games because of Immortal, Immortals of Avium's performance. Uh, you know, again, they said they spent 125 million on the budget. It was a, a single player game, it had all the fixings of a, uh, you know, a single player, you know, say extravaganza, AAA single player shooter. Uh, how much, how much in distribution and all that stuff like that. So much money in Unreal Engine 5, a game that looks so good, but it just didn't it just didn't sell well it just didn't sell well to, to to people and again it just didn't hit in terms of you know the the reception uh and they're saying single player games are taking a hit man it's it's a it's a sad time for them when how do you feel about that single player games are taking a hit if you suck no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um i think i think there's a lot to be said about uh immortals of avium single player game drop 
right next to fucking one of the biggest games of last year. Um, marketed heavily, but it just didn't get anybody's attention because it didn't look crazy, you know? Like, I, I remember watching these trailers and thinking to myself, like, I should go play Borderlands 3 again. Mm -hmm. And it's not that, you know, you gotta reinvent the wheel here, but it's just, I don't even know what the game was about. I saw it, there was cool visuals. What's, it's a single player game, what's the story like? Who are mm -hmm. these people? Why should I care? Like, what is, you gotta, you, I, I think the marketing sucked, and I, it's not that, the, that people didn't see it, I just think they didn't capture any attention, because there's just, like, nothing to talk about. Like, mm -hmm. what, uh, you, you've, have you played the game, have you seen anything? What is this game about, Drip, do you know? Um, Magicians, War. Uh, right, that's what I thought. Yeah, Magicians, War, um, Gina Torres is a fine woman, that's all I got from this. That's, that's, Except, that's, that's just really it. Shout out Gina Torres, though. Amazing one. I think, I think somebody on this team or, or some people on this team dropped the ball, and that's okay. It happens. Is it a grim time for single-player games? I don't really think so. Um, I think games like Spider-Man did really well. Yeah. Games like... I mean, it was uh, just, you know... Legend, Legend of Zelda was out there. I mean, you know, this yeah. could be an uh, Alan Wake did okay. Alan Wake Alan, 2. Alan Wake I was literally going to say Alan Wake 2. Like, yeah, this ba Baldur's, Baldur's Gate did all right. They did okay. You know, they, they, they had an okay year. You could, you could make the argument that people are trying less single player games as opposed to multiplayer games, but that's that's mostly because of money. A lot of multiplayer games these days are free, like mm -hmm. Overwatch and all them boys. They're, they're free games. Um, so I just don't know if this is necessarily true. I understand you got to keep morale up. And you don't want to point fingers at anything, but I think I think some internal conversations need to be had about why this failed. I think it, they and I really truly do think they should just ask people. Like just mm -hmm. just ask avid gamers. Like why didn't you? If you want to know, in, Immortals of Avium. If you're listening in right now for some reason because you found us and you fucks with the, you fucks with us. What's up? How you doing? Hi. I didn't <laughs> play this game because I didn't know what the fuck it was about. And it didn't capture my attention in a month that was highly contested with uh, Boulder's Gate and, um, oh, another single player game that was really popular, um, Armor Core. Like, bro, they you literally, know, you, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, like bro, it's, you, you released in a very contented, in a contended month. Which seems to be a recurring theme for you, EA. It seems to yeah. be a recurring theme. I don't know why you think your games are just gonna like automatically sell like hotcakes in the middle of the one of the hottest years, the most anticipated months of that year. You've done this multiple times now, and that's a whole nother side conversation. You keep you keep putting games that need to prove themselves in the worst position possible and expect them to float. Like, what? Yeah, I and it, it's it's also a single player first person shooter. Those are really hard to pull off these days. I feel. Um, the only single player first person shooter that I've played that I fucking loved mm. until this day I think about is like Doom Eternal. Yeah. Like there, there aren't many first person shooters that to me are so unremarkably amazing. Mm -hmm. like, like not un unremarkable, but like so fucking good that I'm just like, damn, I I need to I need to keep tapping in. It it's just I th I think a lot of the problem may have lied in the marketing. Cause if you would have if i would have gotten to play it because that's the thing is like i didn't even i didn't even get to under i didn't even see gameplay really because I, I was so uninterested and that i think is the biggest the biggest issue for them mm -hmm. i don't think it's a bad time for single player games at all um i Bro. think it is a different time because multiplayer games are more are, are more um prevalent and i feel like we're going to be seeing more multiplayer games and just in general that's just like the internet that's just like how we since 2020 we've been a lot of people have been communicating online it makes sense that multiplayer games are are, are on the up and up but yeah no i don't think it's a bad time for single player games bro you're smoking dust if you think this is a bad time for single player games when did this game drop it dropped it dropped <sighs> this is my thing all right guys all right Okay, one, let me handle it. Let me, this issue is twofold. One, you have to make a game that takes a risk. Again, this is an EA original game, all right? This is an EA original game. So I'm going to stay, I'm a stay in, in the in-house. I'm going to stay in-house. This game failed to wow and impress people. Maybe from a graphical standpoint, it did, 
but where's the actual divergent gameplay you know what i'm saying people automatically went to the game like oh this feels like call of duty just in a magical sense you know what i'm saying call of duty with magic blah 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 and sometimes it works to your benefit sometimes it won't there wasn't enough of a difference in that gameplay in that loop to garner enough interest there wasn't enough interest in the story there was enough build up in certain things to really garner enough interest and say oh this is a really different experience that we want to try i'm not saying it's a bad game but it just wasn't divergent enough to pull enough people in on the other end of an ea originals title off of what we've seen so far tales of kinzera zao has built up so much interest and built up so much momentum from how different their game looks how the game is marketed you know what's what's in store for it what they're representing what they're pushing forward you know what i'm saying shouts to the shouts to surgeon studios and all of them but you can tell there's genuine interest that's garnered from what they've been showing because it's coming from a place of yo this is a really different look at what we're trying to provide on the metroidvania series there's a very different basis of where we're coming from so we want you to experience that and that's hooking more people than saying oh this is a different you know what i'm saying this is a call of duty with magic and they didn't say it specifically but like you know just saying oh this is like you know action-packed short single player triple a story da 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 people aren't buying in people aren't buying into that so that's one issue you have to make a quality game that is divergent enough to create interest and immortals of abm didn't do enough of that twofold the second thing why do you release games in hellfire i i'm spamming hell diver references today baby you sent immortals of avian to, Ma to malevolon lake and in malevolon lake that that is literally Baldur's Gate, that's again Armor Core. You put it in some of the most congested months in terms of releases, and you expect a return. You expect a really solid result from that. I say drop games in summer. You waited to the end of summer to drop. You waited to the end of summer, August of last year, till until when these heavy hitters started coming through. Just drop it in June. Drop it in July. Drop it. Drop it in a place where again you might not get the greatest immediate hit because it is summer, and again it might be a low period for those behavioral trends, but. The world is moving past some of those things. People are going to be inside no matter what. So you can bank on it. You can take a risk on the timing of a release and potentially get a good result. If your game is good enough, you're going to you're gonna make it through that summer period fine and you're going to get more buzz going into the fall so people can actually see you. And that might end up to your benefit. Like, dog, you got, you got to figure it out. Stop, stop. EA's got to stop choking their games and, you know what I'm saying, and stop pushing them off a cliff at their first flight. And they got to they gotta really make something that, that really stands out. That's simple. Yeah. Mm -mm, man. Mm -mm. Shit is tough, bro. Shit is tough. They gotta stop doing that, bro. Again, don't make me don't make me say Titanfall. Don't make me say it. Cause I'll go back in on it. Uh anyways, let's keep it pushing forward before I have a damn <laughs> breakdown over that. Uh anyways, Disco Elysium. The stadium, uh the, the studio, not stadium, the studio behind Disco Elysium, uh Zaum Z A U M. Uh, they're reportedly laying off about 25% of their staff and canceling a new game that was on the way. Apparently, the new game was a standalone expansion to Disco Elysium that was about a year or so out. Uh, and we've heard that it's not a great situation at there. Now, shout out to Okami reporting in on, you know, just what's been going on at ZAUM. Um, apparently, the new leadership that came in, they kicked out the original people who made Disco Elysium, like the original devs, and they canceled the sequel, they canceled a bunch of other games, and then they laid it off, they laid off a bunch of people in this in this in this latest move. And it, who knows where the the that studio's going, if there even be another Disco Elysium at this point. Uh when your thoughts. Disco Elysium is a game I need to get back into. Um the main reason I stopped was just um I think I was trying to do a video on it and there was a lot of reading. <laughs> and I am not a voice actor, nor am I paid to be one. So I was like, listen, I can't keep doing this because I'm not going to read all this text out loud every single mm -hmm. time. But phenomenal game. I think my friend bought it for me because I was like, damn, I really want to play it, but I, I don't have the money for it. And he's mm -hmm. like, I don't give a fuck. I'll buy it for you. Amazing game. I've heard nothing but good things. I really, really am sad to hear that it's kind of going uh, because I think that with games like Boulder's Gate, introducing people to this like um turn-based top-down rpg type system this could have really succeeded very well like if you're like oh i like boulders gate a lot oh what's this game disco Elysium? it looks similar to boulders gate it's not gonna be the same thing but if you're somebody who enjoyed like talking your way out of situations in boulders gate there's a lot of that in disco Elysium, and like building your character a specific way having specific builds like oh i'm a person who's gonna be an asshole and i'm gonna fight everybody you could do that or you could just take the route of like non-combative and just talk your way through things it's really it's such an interesting game 
Um, and it's really, really sad to see. I really, I really pray for the end of these layoffs soon. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, all I have to say is let's take care of our people in gaming because they create what we love. And if the decision makers continually screw the people that make what we love, what we love might not be as good as it can be. That's it. That's really it. It just, again, at what cost does art come from, you know, business progress? Uh, what, what is it? What is it? Uh, pro profits or the process? We got to pick one. Pick one at this point. And consumers, we got to voice our opinion about that that type of shit. If, if, they're, if they're feeding us something that's derivative just to get a, a sale out of us, we can speak up against it. That's all I'm saying. Love to those devs, though. They made a classic, and no, that shit is amazing. And again, they, we just—I just hope that you know what I'm saying that, that that classic gets revered, and hopefully the, the the name and the the IP of it doesn't get squandered in the future by people who might not be as equipped to, to take it into the future. Ah, but yeah, that's that. Um, so the switch might be going. The, the switch might get pushed back to 2025. Uh, we've been hearing reports. People said it might drop this year. It might not. It might not drop this year. Uh, a lot of stuff. But there's been multiple sources who have now said the Switch will be uh, pushing back to Q1 or, or setting up for Q1 2025 instead of 2024. Not sure what the reasoning behind it was. Maybe just because it's a tough year uh, in 2024 itself. But when? How do you feel about 2025 Q1 being a, a Nintendo Switch sequel drop or next Nintendo console it being? I think it would make more sense because I feel like the Switch drop, the original Switch dropped in March, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I think that it would be, I think releasing in March is always just beneficial. Um, I think Nintendo should not be releasing, even, even if PlayStation and Xboxes don't release in the winter seasons, I think dropping a Switch in March makes more sense to me because then like you can make the decision of like, do I want to pay for a bunch of games in the spring or do I want to buy a Switch? You know, don't want to take that hit. And then you have the summer to recoup your bread and pick mm -hmm. up those games in the springs that you didn't. As opposed to like in the winter months where a Switch is dropping on Christmas. Damn, now I got to buy all these Christmas presents. And I'm saying this in like from the, the perspective of not a parent, like just a gamer myself. Mm -hmm. During Christmas, I'm not buying consoles for myself. I'm buying a bunch of gifts and stuff for other people. Like it's it's a giving holiday or a giving season. Sometimes if I do have the money, I'll buy myself something nice. But I think you're kind of like bottlenecking because a lot of people need a lot of other stuff. But dropping it in March, psh, you drop it in March, drop it in February, you know, you recoup a little bit of bread. You can make the decision. I'm going to cop it in March. I don't really got to. You have a whole year of looking forward to whatever shit drops for this console. And like it just to me makes more sense. And I know that like even though the, the next PlayStation may not drop in the in the in those months there will be other shit that drops in those months there'll be a lot of games that drop in those months so i think it's better to mm. just release earlier in the year as opposed to later <clears throat> yeah um i i think that's that makes sense that, that definitely makes sense um all i will say is um that makes me a little uh less mad that i got a switch last christmas <laughs> i just bought it <laughs> a, a little less mad it gives us more time to play through some shit and then we can figure out what's going on i might I'm, i don't i don't know if i'm gonna resell i might re gift i don't even know what's gonna happen but uh in any case i think nintendo will be fine they'll have a, they have enough literally this year to cover whatever and they have a they have a partner direct coming up literally on what tomorrow or on thursday tomorrow at nine o'clock that's gonna again provide some new information on what partner titles and people are like yo a partner direct yeah this is cooked this is my this is the the, the the this generation of, of nintendo console might be close coming to a close anyways and they're doing partner directs so it was just funny hearing that but Again, whatever Nintendo do, I think they're going to be in a good spot. And them, you know, measuring twice and cutting once and waiting for 2025, I think it's a good year. I think that's fair. And damn, bro, GTA Theory, the GTA Theory. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh, bro. Every time GTA dropped, a new console's dropping. What the hell? Dog, it's real. It's real. I'm, yeah. I'm, it's not. Nah, nah, it's more It's more than 10 for now. Oh, my gosh. We got we, we to gotta talk about that in full, bro. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's insane. GTA gta has beyonce levels of inf influence it's on this industry. it really <laughs> got the streets moving that's crazy every single year oh my gosh dog nah nah that's that's unreal that's unreal but yeah switch have no fears that whenever it drops it'll it'll, it'll be fine all right 
switching over uh back on to the ea front talking about respawn this time we've heard a lot of words about a new star wars game coming through and not just any star wars game a single player experience a first person shooter a potential mandalorian star wars game coming from respawn entertainment so again this could be an interesting time another another star wars experience coming into the fray from respawn uh when your reaction to what we're looking at in a mandalorian fps game it's been confirmed that's a mandalorian game I, 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 there's been a lot of inside sources corroborating it there's been no official thing but uh, again a lot of a lot of inside people who have been right before they're saying it's it, it, the next game respawn is looking into is a, a first person mando game makes sense i need to watch the, i need to finish the series i think i watched the first season and i was like damn this is gas and yeah. then i stopped paying for disney plus <laughs> but um no this is that would be sick i actually think that that would be a really good character to do it on me personally big boba fett fan but i know mando has like a lightsaber or something along the line so it would give some diversity in the gameplay i think this would be pretty dope um do I want a first person? Yeah, first person would be fine. It's it's Mando. I don't need to see his face, and I don't think it matters. Yeah. Um, that would be cool. I I like the respawn Star Wars games, man. Though that's a, that's those are people who've been who took an IP and really know how to hold on to it and do it do it right, man. They, mm -hmm. they know what they're doing with Star Wars. Facts. They listen. Respawn has a really good hit rate. Um, and yeah, when I again, I you know I've been on my tidbits about nostalgia and all that shit like that. But again, when you have enough creative reign to really make something that is divergent and really make something that is a fresh experience or a fresh take in 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 whatever universe in whatever existing thing that people know and love you got some you got some about you and they've been doing that consistently with the star wars franchise um this is my thing um we we, we, we were wronged in the past you know what i mean we were wronged uh and just because star wars 1313 was supposed to be a fantastic game that got canceled and never came out and being uh, uh, being a gunslinger, being a shooter in that, you know what I'm saying, from that like 10 minute gameplay snippet that we got way back when, that would have been so fun. So getting something close to that, something close to Bounty Hunters, uh, that was like, again, PS2 era, something like that. Getting something, getting somewhere back to those experiences for, again, a game for the modern day and having Mando on it. I think that's a really, really good idea. There's a lot of good stuff on it. If you put it in Star, if you put it in like, you know, the the, the, the lower levels of Coruscant, like 1313, I, that would be great. That would be a cool experience if you just the stick Mando into 1313. I wouldn't be mad at that at all, at all. Like, it's, just just feed my inner child. Just feed my inner child. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but all this on paper looks like a very, very competent and very very fun game that that we're gonna you know be in store for so i can't wait to hear more about it respawn do your worst which will probably be the best all right uh yo i am full of hell diver references this week baby because <laughs> we had some word now follow me here we had some word from uh some people who used to work on the halo franchise uh this week on the timeline with the whole boom of hell divers over this past week we got some information revealed that there were several people at you know uh, again i don't know if it was bungie or it was 343 at the time um it, i'm pretty sure it was i'm thinking it would have been uh in 343 um so it was probably like again like halo four five six years uh, four or five infinite years um they said they pitched like 20 to 30 game ideas i believe it was kevin schmidt uh who was a senior designer he used to be a a, a lead designer for 343 and apparently they pitched like 30 game ideas over a, a long like 12 years that he worked at uh you know worked at 343 and worked in the halo universe he said there were so many single player multiplayer you know like odst style games and going back into the OD, odst style thing and there was one of them that pretty much played almost exactly like hell divers so there was so many so much uproar about this uh, over the past week of like damn we really could have had a halo hell divers style game and a bunch of stuff like that that really kind of expanded what halo looked like in, in terms of the universe so when your reaction to us missing out on that I'm not, again not a hate not a big halo guy i know you're I, a halo I, hater you're, I, don't, I, I don't like i'm not a halo hater you're a halo hater you're a halo hater you're a halo hater you're a halo hater in your heart and you know that i think i think it's an important <laughs> franchise i think the people who enjoy it you know i shout out to y'all it's a really cool franchise not oh. i've not aged well but it is it is what it is 
Um, I think I think it's I'd be mad as shit if I found out Hell Divers is going crazy. And I'm like, bro, I told you about this yeah, shit. Bro. We could have had this, and y'all was like, no, it's it's tough. It is tough, bro. But I, I actually like seeing. <clears throat> This kind of like it may rock the boat a little bit, being like, mm. "Yo, I told these motherfuckers this, and they didn't want it," mm -hmm. um, because like you know, it may make you seem like a little bit difficult to work with or, or whatever. But I do think it's important that like people air out, like, "Yo, I, I pitched this to these people, they said no," mm -hmm. and having everybody respond like, "Yo, you're telling me," you know, <laughs> like it, it just makes like, it's just so stupid, man. Yeah. Like a lot of the people would just say no to shit, and look, like. It you could have had you could have had Helldivers on the Game Pass right now. We could have been on this already, mm -hmm. but y'all are like, nah, we don't want that. But I also I also let's to be fair, I don't think they would have been able to recreate mm. uh, what Helldivers is. I can't. I, well, actually, you can't even say for certain. We don't know. We don't know mm -hmm. if this would have been literally Helldivers on Xbox, right? Mm. What we do know though is that y'all y'all really be fumbling. You know, I feel like sometimes Bro. people. I feel like, and I also think. I want to be give a little bit of grace to the receiving side of these people who you know the people who are, who made the rejections. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you are looking at all the things in front of you, it is hard for me to say yes to something, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you tell me if I'm over here working on like I, I in I have the big grand scheme of things, I have the big plan in front of me, and somebody mm -hmm. says, "Hey, I want to add this to that plan." As somebody who made the plan, you're probably not really excited to hear it. No mm -hmm. matter what, you're like, man, I don't know if I want to divert what we're doing over here to do this over here maybe later. Yeah. But that's how you miss out on shit, you know? It sucks. But I do like I do like hearing the games that got rejected because, Facts. like, I don't think... I think the people who you pitched it to may say no, but there may be somebody out there who's like, wait a minute, let's go grab that guy. Let's go see if we could get mm -hmm. it. Or let's go buy his idea off of him. Can we get the rights to that so that yeah. I could go develop it with my team over here? I think we should be a little bit more transparent about what goes on in those kind of meetings because it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Somebody could be... I could be like, yo... I want to put, I want to make a game where you put the toilet seat down. That's the whole <laughs> game. And a lot of people be like, thanks for tweeting that out. Nobody wants that. And like, mm. you know, it dies. But somebody might be like, yo, over us at Flush Inc. would love to put the toilet no. seat down game. So let's, they, let's, they let's just, make it happen. They just think it's a game, but Skibbity Toilet is literally one of the most popular things on earth. And I don't know why, but you see what I'm saying? Like it, 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 yeah, it, it can hit another day. Honestly, it could hit another day. But yeah, as a Halo fan, I was hurt reading this. I was very much distraught. Uh, I was like, bro, we really could have, because, again, I've said this before, ODST, I originally hated ODST, Halo 3 ODST, but it grew on me, because that was, again, one of the only games I had at a certain point in time, that, that was a consistent <laughs> one, but, but it had to grow on yes, you. Yes, it had to grow on me, but I actually did like it for what it was, I, after time, I was like, damn, I really, I really disrespected you when, like, I appreciate your presence, and... It was. It could be so easy to like put a hell divers like experience because they're literally shock drop troopers. They're shock troopers. They literally drop out of the sky and make stuff happen. So how? And it was again like four player. It was like a co op. They had like the you know, Mickey and all all the other people like that. Like it just it just made sense to have that a whole again invasion style hell divers game with the flood. That would have been an easy sell. Easy sell. Not even the covenant. Just a flood. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many ways and avenues that Halo can expand to, and it kind of sucks that nobody took that direction to really, you know, maybe push a little bit further and push in another direction and go a different way. Um, but honestly, I agree. I agree. Having these ideas out in the open and kind of expressing them at least helps us show... It, for me, it gives me a little bit of calm and validation to know, hey, we got the right creative people in the right space, at least pitching these ideas. You know what I'm saying? It, now, at the executive level and the higher levels accepting those decisions and making those decisions happen or those ideas happen is another that's another question for another day but i'm just happy that the industry is full of such creative bright people that are pitching these ideas constantly like yo this could work this could really be a thing because they're echoing the sentiment of so many fans out there they're they're the the that connection whether we know it or not to getting these ideas being brought to life that's that, that that gives me a little bit of solace knowing that you know it didn't happen but there's so many people that are pulling for the same things we're pulling for there's people who are just fans of these ips that we're playing they're fans of games in general that want to see these experiences made and they echo what we want they echo what we, we what we're what we're wanting to see and, and that that gives me a little bit of peace knowing that you know there are those people that were there at 343 there are those people that are like they're they're scattered all across the industry and you know games games like that you know those experiences will come one form or another you know what i'm saying and this is funny because eventually you know if if you're not going to do it it'll come out in some form or another if you have a good idea and you don't act on it eventually somebody else will have it they're not necessarily stealing your idea but somebody else will just think of it 
again for years assassin's creed we wanted we i'm I'm gonna bring it up every time assassin's creed's like yo everybody yo just go to japan go to japan go to japan go to japan go shishima comes out nah it's cool you don't gotta go to japan no more we got that covered it's fine you got back up you're good we don't need you anymore it can happen just like that you know what i mean so i'm i'm just glad that we have those champions in in those spaces to kind of echo what what a lot of us would really want so that was cool to see that was a cool story all right and on to this piece here so oh it seems like uh in-person events and stuff are in for a quick shakeup because ign has announced ign live an in-person three-day event in la coming in june during e3 season or the ghost of e3 season again it's uh, they're touting a lot of world-class talent from gaming creators the devs publishers a lot of first looks new releases exhibitors we don't know was going to be there yet but they wanted to really build an in-person event trying to kind of fill up the gap that e3 left after they officially i guess died uh but yeah they're 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 looking to they're they're looking to take that place they're looking to fill up that space and have a have an event that's uh hopefully somewhat different for that level of fan access and and what they want to do so ig and live your thoughts when the first two rows bring your ponchos the glazing will be uh (laughs) very much around you don't want to get you don't want to get hit with anything you know protect yourself at all costs no i mean like it's cool i think i think it's i don't want to say it's a little late for ign to do this I think this is like there is no there is no E3 anymore, so this would probably be the best time to do it. But if anybody was going to do something like this, I think it's IGN. They have the most connections, and I feel like they're probably one of the bigger names. Um, it really depends on how good this is, though, because I remember like IGN way back in the day when I was like really really big fan of IGN. Uh, they had like IGN Prime or something like that, mm-hmm. and they were like, you know, you're gonna get free games, you're gonna get free access to things, da 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 da, and it kind of fell through. And it's gonna require a lot of planning and i just i i don't know what they've done in the past that can like be on the same level as like an e3 like event like that's a lot of work you know it's a lot of work a lot of coordination a lot of i think they could do it <clears throat> and i think it will be an interest if they do do it i think it would be cool but man i i wish them the best i'm not even gonna like make fun of them or anything like i literally wish you the best because this is a huge undertaking um hopefully you guys can pull through Mm. yeah um this is my thing all right um if you're gonna do this what is gonna separate you from jeff Keeley and summer game fest because he's clearly taking a strong lead and a big hand in murdering what we knew of e3 and he's got a foothold on the market ign as a big conglomerate i feel like they have enough pull to really get some things but what's going to be differentiable from summer game fest like jeff Keeley's already tenured in this area he's already gonna that's the big question you know what i mean for me how are you going to differentiate differentiate yourself across your fan experience your exhibitor experience live and in the live streams and the showcase stuff that you're actually going to put on the main stage how are you going to establish that credibility how are you going to how are you going to differentiate yourself from summer game fest that's my thing because if we're just watching two shows over and over again it's just a rerun of whatever came first it, it doesn't make no sense from an online standpoint it doesn't make sense maybe from an exhibitor standpoint if you can pull somebody in cool but if you're pulling the same people at summer game fest it's kind of redundant so they've got to do their best to diversify what they're doing do something different what well, who are you going to pull you know what i'm saying like jeff Keeley got got kojima in his back pocket you know what i'm saying he got kojima on him who what do you got you got to do something in response brother like what's happening see what i'm saying and honestly they should go ahead i was gonna say they should work in conjunction with jeff Keeley because well i think i think it would be a good idea to be like hey do you want to help like sponsor this or whatever just because it may not really like conflict with summer games fest you know this could be something completely different yeah i don't they would not they would not put it on the same time as summer game fest they're yeah they were they would not do that they're probably gonna do like the week after days after or something like that i don't think it's gonna be time wise it's not gonna be in conflict they're just gonna be during the same season that early june part that we all know yeah like you could do something like that like hey by the way y'all uh after game fest uh ign is also hosting their, their event maybe maybe in the same city or in the same space you can just tell people so that way you guys can just like tell them like oh just stay an extra week or whatever or something but um i don't know 
I just can't see this being as as big as they would want it to be. You know, having a space though for people to try out demos or something like that, I think that's achievable. Mm. Um, but they need to set people's expectations. They need to they need to really let be like, hey, this is not gonna be the next E3. We're just trying to hold another space for these games to be to be showcased in and in a, in a place where people can come and play them themselves or something like that. Yeah. It, there's potential there but again it's the bur the burden of proof is on ign to prove that again they're not just another they're not just there for show and they're there to actually provide some some really strong value and provide some difference from watching summer game fest because if you just put on the same shit or lesser quality why would i watch you so it just gotta lock in gotta lock in all right and uh real quick got uh two quick stories in the trailer trove man first and foremost the x-men 97 trailer has dropped uh again got the first looks at the continuation of the series from the 90s again some looks at again all the characters some of the action you know what i'm saying uh some of the some of the little twists and all the stuff like that like it, it looks it looks it looks really dope to me but i i don't know what you got from from what you saw that one I thought it's 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 really the art style is the one thing I guess is like the most striking thing. It's gonna either be the best thing about it or the worst thing about it, because mm -hmm. um, I know what they're going for, and it it's kind of working. But part of me still feels a little like, you know, I haven't seen too many movements. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think that it's gonna be an interesting show, and I I am a fan of the X Men. I've been reading the comics, at least the '90s comics. Mm. So I think it's going to be really, really dope. And I, I missed that era of superhero shows where it was very much like it felt like reading the comic books. Mm -hmm. And I don't I didn't read the comic books at the time, but they were to, they were they had people like Chameleon on like the Spider-Man ones. At least they had like yeah. very obscure characters that you would never see on the big screen because like, why would I spend millions of dollars to bring freaking no, I was going to say Mysterio. But Mysterio was on the big screen. I'm trying to think of like mm -hmm. DDD list uh like hammerhead like they're not gonna make yeah. a whole movie about hammerhead but they'll have an arc in uh in a spider-man tv show mm -hmm. so i like that they're coming back i'm a little hesitant because of the animation and i only heard like wolverine say one thing i'm a huge wolverine fan i'm very biased about my wolverines but i don't think that it's going to be a bad show by any means and i also mm -hmm. wonder how much you need to know about the original show to watch this one I can't imagine it. You need to, because I mean, the trailer yeah. basically sets up the whole show. Yeah, like, it I mean, it, that. yeah, it literally said it's. I mean, literally, it's like the end of the old show. It's the end of the old animated series. That was the last thing that everybody saw. Like Xavier is gone, and now they just got to pick. It's literally like at what pick happens directly after. They just got to pick up yeah. right after the end of again what what happened in the '90s show. So it's not necessarily you have to know everything that's going on. They, they put you at a good bracket point. You can just jump yeah, in. No. Like, Yo, it just, just a really there. good spot. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Drop in honestly from from a timing chronological standpoint and there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that looks like it could, go, could go down man again Ma magneto locked in like this shit like yeah. this, shit, this shit it looked good it looked it good. looks good i another thing and again i think i'm being nitpicky as fuck here yeah. and, that's, and that's fine and that's fine i i encourage it especially with shows that are remakes and rehashes you already know how i feel about that like let's be nitpicky let's be nitpicky because what what's the really purpose of it being here if you're not going to really do something to level it up I, I did not like Magneto's eyes, mostly because mm. I'm like, this motherfucker looks inherently evil. Yeah, I, like, yeah, yeah. And, and, to, and don't get me wrong, uh, yeah. don't get me wrong, we're not saying yeah. he's like, a good guy, but I always <laughs> love the duality of Magneto. Like, I started yeah. reading the, the comic, I think it was like the X-Men 90s, like literally the 90s run, I could be wrong, mm. um, but like one of the first comics was like, Magneto fucking got a, a meteor that orbits earth and has uh he's like yo i would just want to live here you need to leave me the fuck alone mm -hmm. type vibe and like when i saw him here i'm like oh this motherfucker looks like he's going to kill everybody involved yeah. he looks like he, he wants everybody dead whereas like magneto's more like i don't give a fuck about y'all but if y'all keep fucking with me i'm gonna make shit a problem mm -hmm. but like i that was like my only nitpicky thing i was like yeah this motherfucker looks like literally born to murder yeah but I mean, anybody it, anybody not be anybody, I, 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 he might not yeah. be he i mean again the, the general yeah the eyes itself i'd have to look back in the nice version specifically to see if his eyes were the same but everything else yeah was that's another much, thing pretty, too i didn't consistent. watch the original ah so like, okay okay yeah. okay yeah but I the rest of the rest of yeah the rest of his like again like his hair and all stuff like that facial structure this that's, that's pretty much what it was yeah. in the nice like just again less in 480p but you know what i mean it's, it's mostly the same yeah. build i I don't know if they changed or not exactly. I can't remember. It, and it was just like the dark areas around his eyes. And yeah. I was just like, man, this motherfucker looks like 
villainous. And Fair. he's a villain, quote unquote, to some. You know, some people don't see him as that. Yeah. But like, that, I think that's what's so important about Magneto is that like, some people see him as a villain, some people don't see him as a villain. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's the cool part about Magneto. But I really do not want to take anything away from this show. Um, these I, That's why I'm saying I am being very nitpicky. I am trying to find shit wrong, mm -hmm. I feel like. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be a really, really, really good show. I'm happy for all the people. Like, I've seen the outpour of people being like, yo, we were we finally got this shit back. Listen, this was my shit growing up. Me, like, that's my amazing. X-Men. You know what time yeah, it is. Like, that shit was dope. Like, that, that shit is really dope. And I'm, I want to get a disney plus subscription maybe perhaps or get a, a cheaper alternative to yeah. to enjoy said show yeah, you know but, but uh I definitely yeah definitely <laughs> looks really cool definitely looks really cool 100 100 man I, yeah i personally have actually got i got more excited from watching that trailer i already knew i was interested but yeah this definitely like it looks like they're they're giving some some justice to it so i i'm locked in i'm locked in i definitely do want to do want to catch it when it drops um and the last piece of news that we had today uh Fantastic Four has finally confirmed their castings uh, again for the characters for everybody across the board. Again, Pedro Pascal is Mr. Fantastic. Reed Richards, uh, Vanessa Kirby is uh, Sue Storm, uh, Ebon Moss uh, Bachrock. Uh, my, my man's from uh, what's it called? Uh, the Bear and stuff. He is uh, cousin. Yes, cousin. He is Ben Grimm, uh, and Joseph Quinn is Johnny Storm. Uh, aka the human torch so with that casting i know there's been a lot of discourse about that that's been happening over the past week people were like oh it's great oh it's bad oh it's uh, in between but how do you feel about this casting one man have you seen the bear i haven't i haven't seen the bear i've always seen a bunch of fucking clips i, I need to watch the okay, bear okay I so i want you to watch i want you to watch the bear is solely for uh cousin uh who is the who is uh ben grimm because you're going to watch the show and you're going to be like, the way this man invokes emotion mm. is fucking unreal. Like you just, your heart hurts when some of the, when it's some of his scenes. And that's why, like, I, when I, I don't know how, where I'm going to watch this movie at. Because <laughs> I might have to, I might be bawling my eyes out with him and Pedro Pascal. <laughs> they're like, fucking, they're going to make me cry. But uh, I'm very happy about the, I'm very happy about the casting of of the thing pedro pascal cooks fucking almost like it it's it, it's it's crazy how well he cooks um <clears throat> don't know much about vanessa kirby don't know much about a uh, joseph quinn uh who's a yeah. johnny storm yeah but just those two names alone is enough to carry me through this yeah like fucking believe it or not when i heard when i saw Michael B. Jordan in mm. Fanta. I was like, yo, maybe this show might be hard. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this show might be hard. Hold uh, on a second. He be cooking. Uh, we, I haven't even yeah. seen the trailer for that movie, so we're not even going to talk about Bro, that. Bro, that, that was absolute dog shit. But again, I didn't hate that cast. I didn't hate Miles no, Teller. Yeah. I didn't. I don't hate Miles. Miles Teller's a good actor. He's a really good actor. I like Michael B. Jordan. You know what I'm saying? I think that, that cast was solid, but... <sighs> Yeah, yeah. No, we never mentioned. Breath. Let's never mention that bullshit again. Uh, we will. Yeah, we will. Yeah, but, but this, I think this cast. I think they're gonna cook. Yeah, I think they're gonna cook. Yeah, this cast right here. Now, this is my thing. Um, Human Torch. I don't really have a problem with. Again, I let's just let's just hurry up and get to the point where he's interacting with Spider Man because I need I need them to be besties. All right, let's lock that in. Let's let's get that let's get that let's get that rolling, butter. You know what I'm saying? I Pedro Pascal with the goat Tom Holland. Oh my god. Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I didn't want to say his name out loud, but whatever. Damn it. All right, whatever. But again, I want to see the interaction with him and the rest of the MCU. Uh what's it called? What's it called? Uh there's just <sighs> It's just good stuff. It's that. It's just good stuff. I, I forgot my man's name. The little robot in the corner. I think it's. It, it, is it? Is it Herbie? I'm pretty sure it's Herbie. I, I. I don't know why the name is slipping me up. But little robot. Whatever. There's a lot of little touches in this. In the little picture that they gave us that was yeah. dope. Um. Again, I like the casting. Uh, I haven't seen too much of it, but again, I heard good things from. Uh, again, Ebon for uh, Ben Grimm. Um. Vanessa Kirby looks like probably the most. Uh, look and acting wise probably the most matching casting on all ends i know the big point of contention was pedro pascal as mr fantastic this is my thing all right as as uh from a facial feature matching the i guess the aesthetic from a facial point of reed richards he's not gonna look like the reeds that we knew exactly i don't think yeah. he'll look like the reeds that we knew Pedro Pascal at this point, and I, I was talking to my brother about this. 
chill on me. I just mean in execution, not in the same level of magnitude. But he reminds me of like a, a Denzel type of performance in, in, in some cases. You know that's Denzel. That's not Reed Richards at some point. You just know that's Denzel Washington acting his ass off. Like, yo, he's playing a crazy character right now. Denzel going crazy. Mm -hmm. Pedro Pascal and whatever he touches, he is cooking. You know what I'm saying? Now that he's a household name, now that he's well known for for years now, it's like he doesn't look like he's not transforming into Reed Richards, but he's gonna act his ass off and give a very very compelling performance as Reed Richards. You know what I mean? It's like he's not gonna physically blend into the like the role and the aesthetics of him in some cases, especially in facial expression, but emotionally from a performance standpoint, he's gonna give you Reed Richards. So I have I have full faith in the acting chops of Pedro Pascal to actually give us read, but physically it may be a little bit of a different like adjustment from looking at him again from like uh, um what's the, what's my man's name from the first Fantastic Four live action stuff from the early two thousands. Oh, I don't fucking know. Um, I, I don't know, but he was I, he I think he was actually a good read. I think he was actually a good yeah. read, especially aesthetically wise. Like face wise, he looked like Reed. You know what I mean? So. Uh, it's it's just that adjustment but once you understand pedro pascal is a good fucking actor so he's gonna be fine i i i am just curious of who is going to be doom who is going to be silver surfer and by by extension if they're gonna put galactus in the movie and who's gonna be galactus it's like let's let's figure all these things out in a row you know what i mean i hope they got the casting down beyond the, the this four but i think this is a good four to build on Honestly, I I have high I have high hopes for them. I really do. Yeah. People people may be in certain some sorts about it, but I have high hopes for them. I love the Fantastic Four. Again, they're probably they they're they've they've been up there with one of my favorite groups, you know, in in Marvel stuff, in comic stuff in general. I love them. So I hope that they can get done justice in this run. Apparently, again, this whole movie is apparently going to be set in like the '60s, uh, so which could provide some explanation as to why they weren't there for like everything else. So it, it could be interesting to see how they're inserted into the MCU and stuff. But I can't wait. I can't wait, man. This is segue in essence is such big things in the MCU. Uh, one day it's dead, the next day it's back. But anybody who's rational of mind understands that they had to build a little bit and really get some stuff set, sorted before they can really move forward. So. I'm happy about it. I'm happy about the casting. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Like I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like I think I think this is gonna be really good, it, really fun movie to watch. One thing that I would like people to stop doing with these live actions is because I think one of the biggest things I saw was like, well, will Pedro Pascal be willing to play Reed Richards for like ever? I think you guys need to accept that we're not going to get these movies forever. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not going to be able to have fantastic movies forever unless we keep resetting shit or we just got to... Or we all, as a community, have to sit down and accept that Tom Holland will not be Spider-Man every single time. We can continue the same storyline mm -hmm. if y'all want to, but y'all got to be willing to let somebody walk in and be like, I'm Peter Parker, and then somebody be like, I'm Mary Jane, and we're going to continue the story from here on out. And you guys not be like, uh, 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 uh. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what, the issue I have is that, like, because I see Pedro Pascal. I love him. He is a little bit older, though. He will not be doing this shit for 17 years. I don't think Benedict Cumberbatch will be playing this character, will be playing Doctor Strange for fucking ever. But we don't need universe resetting events every time they want to change the actor in the, in the costume. Mm -hmm. Or you guys just fucking watch animated movies that like, god forbid we get some animated movies because i feel like that would be for the longevity of shit it'd make more sense but you can't have it all mm -hmm. i think that these the actors chosen i think we're going to do a phenomenal job i mean i already have two of my favorites out of the four main cast i don't think that the other two characters could really bring it down i i have so much faith in mm -hmm. um in this cast if i'm wrong oh no another mm. marvel movie didn't do as great i'm crying in my sleep <laughs> but i would love to see pedro pascal's interactions with like i wish it would have been around the time with like robert downey jr i think it would have been really interesting to see mm -hmm. um him talking to iron yeah. man yes. but i am interested in, in, in seeing where they're gonna go from from this movie and how the fantastic four are gonna change the universe i can't wait to see hopefully we get to see like some fantastic four and and uh spider-man yes or maybe we I need get to it. see some like uh i would love to see what the, what their interaction is with like i mean i'd also love to see spider-man with like the x-men like i can't wait yes. for that that to get brought into the mix but I definitely and i love the fact that like i also saw this tweet that i thought was really funny mm. which was like yo they really dropped all this fucking news 
like back to back to back. It was like mm-hmm. X Men '97, yeah. Fantastic Forecasting. Like they're 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 firing on all cylinders. I'm just happy to see that these obscure as characters are being shown some love and which means we're gonna finally get them in video games because if anybody knows the story of like mm. marvel versus capcom ultimate hey. or infinite or whatever they they didn't put any x-men in it really mm-hmm. i don't even think i don't think there were any x-men because which is they, a didn't, they didn't own yeah they didn't own the rights to the x-men and they didn't want to promote people that they didn't have rights to so maybe we mm-hmm. can finally get another like Marvel Ultimate Alliance game, like a number oh, five or whatever. And we let actually me get, get, a, let me get an additional. Shit. Oh my gosh, I need it. I need it. Get a full fledged joint. There was, I, yeah, wasn't there one that came on on Switch like a couple years ago? And it was pretty solid. Like yeah. it had, and it had X Men, and it had these these characters. But it was like the first time we've seen X Men in a video game in so many in a mm-hmm. long ass time. At least for me, I have I don't remember yeah. an X Men game since like Wolverine Origins or like Spider Man Web of Shadows. Like mm-hmm. I, that was the last time I saw Wolverine in a game. And now he's in like Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Like I would love for them to make an Ultimate Alliance 4 now and you know, show some love, spread some mm-hmm. love. Cause like, these are some cool ass characters. And Reed Richards has some crazy ass fucking, his Bro. hands in a crazy ass arcs in the Marvel universe. Bro, and we need it. I need to know, need it. Dude, did they confirm who Doom is yet? No, is not Doom yet. Part and, of that's, and that's my question. Yeah. I, I, where is he? Where's Doom? Where's Doom? I mm-hmm. need to know. I need to know. The streets need where's, to know. Where's Tyrese? Facts. We need to know what Tyrese is doing right now. We need to make sure he's 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 safe. We don't know because I'm not hey. saying he's doomed, but hey. I'm saying like, so you mean to tell me <laughs> y'all flew out in the space? <laughs> the kind of man like a rock? You? This is crazy. This is crazy. You need some lotion. <laughs> it's not clobbering time. It's it's Jergens time. You need some lotion. <laughs> No nah, man, streets need Tyrese in there, bro. Streets need him. <laughs> oh gosh, but now nah, whoever whoever they cast is doomed. They gotta they gotta get that right. Cause again, he's setting up everything for y'all. It, it, the one casting down is already solid. You built you're building your your two biggest movies on Reed Richards. You know what I'm saying? The Secret Wars. You know what I'm saying? Y'all might get y'all might pull him in the King Dynasty too. Apparently, but we, we'll see. But listen, Reed Richards is literally the backbone of that, and Doom is the backbone of that what you're building yeah. to next so you have to get this spot on i, I we need to we need to see it man i i can't wait to see what they what they cook up mm-hmm. um tyrese's doom is gonna be amazing <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun and a wild wild ride <laughs> i'm dead bro i'm so dead no man big up tyrese every time man legend legend shit uh but uh, that's that's all we got for this episode bro. that's all the notes that i had really um anything that we might have missed from this past week um, not that I can think of. Only thing I saw was like they posted that picture of like the Borderlands stuff, but that just happened an oh, hour yeah. ago, like yeah, while we were recording. Had, it. Yeah, I mean, we we um, knew that was coming. We knew that was coming. Again. Yeah, we knew that was coming. I'm um, still, I still detest Kevin Hart as Roland. I don't care. I'm sorry. <laughs> you cannot do Roland like that. You sick bastards. You can't do that. Yeah. No, you guys. That that is that's evil. That's evil. I think, I think the people who decided these things with this franchise in that movie are not serious <laughs> like i you think- know what and you know who's involved with that randy pitchford himself i don't know if he's still involved I- with that, but he's an un- unserious individual himself so that there's that i i understand i think y'all trying to make a, a funny you know take home movie that like borderlands fans will be like oh this is funny i i would have wanted something more but it seems like it's more like on the, on the lines of like we just wanted to bring people together to enjoy this like this universe okay. and it's like cool but I can't imagine this being like a series. Like, Cause I would have loved it to be like a series, but maybe mm-hmm. this is, they were just like, we don't want to do that. We just want to do one movie and yeah. call it quits. I mean, like, sure. And, you know, hey, shout out to y'all. I hope it I hope it goes well. Yeah. And we'll see. We'll see, man. Cause damn. <laughs> um, outside of that, yeah, that was it called. The uh, college EA college sports football twenty five is actually supposed to come out, which is funny. That I'm surprised that game's even alive. Oh uh, yeah. That's yeah. just awful. I hate I hate that. I'm I not-, not awful game. I I hate the fact that college <laughs> students will not be getting a fucking dime yeah. after you just use my lie. face. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Where's the NIL deals? That needs to be involved. I need the licensing that needs to be involved, brother. We need to we need to talk like, about that for real, for real. But bet money, the schools will be getting that bread. Oh, honey, the schools honey, will definitely getting, be getting prey. Getting paid. Getting but the paid. the people eating ramen mm-hmm. and putting their bodies on the line, yeah, they're Facts. not getting a dollar. Facts. I'm just curious to see how much features they actually added or took out from you know the games of the past, because it'll be funny. It'll be funny to see what they changed for today's climate. 
You know what I mean? Apparently, they said they're going to make an ultimate team for that game. And if I if they, and if they do that and take out a bunch of old features, I'm going to be pissed off and not buy that. So, uh, again, I don't play football games like that, but I will play an NCAA game. I will. If, if given the right of way. You know what I'm saying? If given the enough incentive, I will. But outside of that, nah, I'm cool. Uh, if, if, they, if they mess it up, I'm out. But, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for the news and stuff this week. Again, we got a lot of stuff ahead of us. Again, Nintendo uh partner direct is happening this week that we'll probably have some reactions up on the channel for um just a lot of more stuff moving uh the year's moving fast we got a lot of stuff to get through a lot more news a lot more you know people to bring through games to see reactions to have reviews to give uh hells to dive democracy to spread all that good stuff man uh when give you a closing statement for this episode g um drink your water brush your teeth Log on to Hell Divers at like 7 a.m. You get in right away. Facts. Leave that bitch open. Facts. <laughs> I'm in there. Oh no, right my shit closed. No! I'm so sad. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> we may not no! be dropping, boys. No! I didn't even peep. I looked. I looked around. I'm like literally like, wait, where's that tab? Bro, I have my OBS like not maximized, and I see my tab in the menu, bro. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. <laughs> That's literally. I'm not oh, fucking leaving. <laughs> that's that's literally a meme. That's literally a meme. Oh my gosh, bro, that's insane. No, nah, please get it up servers, bro. I need a party to drop in, man. Oh shit. Oh, I got I got in right away. Never mind. Oh nice. Let's go. So at so maybe maybe the server's issues maybe as of this recording the server's issues are wrong. We will let you know next recording <laughs> if the server issues are still persistent. Facts, facts, facts. We'll check back in with that. Yeah. Um A hey. Spread love, spread democracy. Go rate this podcast five stars. Go show us some love in the algorithm, man. We're so close. I think we are a few off. Uh, if you're on the YouTube side of things, we're like three or four eighty one or something like that. We're almost at four hundred subscribers, I think. Like nineteen away. Go sub this up. Make sure you go like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and just get us up there, man. Almost to four hundred, man. Push us there. We almost there. Almost there. Let's get there. Let's keep pushing through to five hundred, six hundred, and to more goals and smash more. You know what I'm saying? Uh, milestones that we have ahead of us. Um, we appreciate you guys for all the love and support. Stay tuned. We got a lot of stuff cooking, a lot of stuff brewing, a lot of guests to have, a lot of conversations to have, a lot of fun to have on No Cool Down Podcast. And that's all we got. We'll catch you all later. We are out of there. Democracy.